coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. We should talk about death. I had a car crash when I was around 30. I was like a 16 car pile up and we were the first car to crash. I completely destroyed the whole left hand side of my body. Someone had left the car on the outside lane with the boot facing the central reservation. I couldn't get out the door and my left side was so done in I couldn't open the door. It's like my first spiritual moment in my whole life ever. I can't breathe. My lung had gone down, my, le- my ribs were all snapped, like pretty much every rib was broken. I was, I was under the motorway and that's when someone had got left and they got run over loads of times. And the, the dream and things like that, reenacting it. It had such a massive impact on my mental health. Somewhere in between all of this stuff, I started doing rad. I got pushed into a limelight that I wasn't ready for. Halfway through the tour, team manager was like, hey, we're bringing Creature back. We think you'd be a better fit. We want you to be on the team. I was maybe trying to be a little bit cooler than I thought I was. Apparently was involved in so much stuff and I don't think Nick gets enough credit for the amount of things that he made happen. It's not that long ago that a kickflip back lip was an ender. Now you're seeing someone do that as the first trick down a 15 stair handrail in a competition run. I'll be calling out a combination of tricks. Afterwards I go, what the f- just happened? Yeah. Well, we should talk about Greg. As I got to know Greg, there's a lot more going on. I've known him at his worst. I've known him at his best. I'm going to do a lean melon that's so high that when I land, my board's going to break. I've not really seen people snap boards on ramps, landing tricks. Oh yeah, and by the way, I've gone blind. The woman's like, you got a sign here. And I'm like, what for? Blown your spleen up. You're bleeding to death. I'm Mark Churchill, and you've been watching The Brain Drain Show. Good evening and welcome to another great episode of The Brain Drain Show. Joined to my left is my one of my best friends ever in the world. Tell us your name, Toby. It's Toby. It's Toby Richmond Tell us Bachelor. Tell your name, Toby. <laughs> it's Toby Richmond Bachelor. Let's just jump straight into the, uh, let's just cut straight to the chase. We've got some British royalty here. Great MC, great skateboarder. Joined to our left is TV's one and only. Mark Churchill. Mark Churchill. Round of applause in the studio audience, please. Nuts. Thank you for making the travel. Thanks right, for coming. In 20 minutes. Yeah, I know, Will. But normally it would Ish. be a lot. Well, you're Southampton, isn't it? Yeah. You? That's a long way, isn't it? Yeah. I went out Pitt Street. That's a long way from here. It's good fun, though, isn't it? Oh, well, I got it. there and there was too many bigger boys. So oh, there was, there I, was I a hid in the corner. corner. No, I rolled around a bit and realised it's not for me. And Pitt then, Street's great. Yeah. But it's empty. Yeah. Look, Thursday I mean, it looks nice, amazing. Loads of old people sliding across the oh. floor. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. The whole oh. session is them just getting warmed up and then going home. <laughs> Everyone's like three hours of, oh, Stretching. oh one trick and like, that, I'm going to call it. That's nothing better going to happen. Um, the council have given them that building, haven't they? Yeah, that's amazing. Because it is huge, it listed it? as well. No, they're, they're, they're renovating or doing something down there, aren't they? I mean, you. It's an old supermarket, it. and um, it's the luxury of having a skater in the council. Yeah, part oh, of, right, behind okay. it, who said, "Hey, we're not doing anything with this. Mm-hmm. There's this project where they're trying to build a skate park." Yeah. They were going to do it under one of the bridges on the on the way into Portsmouth. Um, and they were like, let's make this happen. And then I think they've been blown away at how important that, that space yeah. has become. Yeah, definitely. It's like a social hub and they do a lot more than just skateboarding there. It's, yeah. it's not a temporary yeah. space, is it? Is it a permanent fixture? Do we I know? three, five years or something like that. But there's talks of another space being provided mm-hmm. when that building gets knocked down and turned into flats, no doubt. Yeah. I don't know if it's getting turned into flats, but it just looks it's a good smooth. space. Yeah, the floor. Everything the just looks unreal. smooth there. Well, when you go to your supermarket and you're walking around going, this would be amazing, the skating, it's yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It's that weird it's big. flecked yeah. floor. Oh, it looks amazing. It's big and smooth. Yeah, I've not been. There's a who, curb. Yeah. Ledges, I saw you there, didn't I? Rounds, I yeah. there. Right, so who was one of the biggest boys you've seen there? That Was there anyone there that you were like, oh. So I know Casper went. Casper's a rad guy. Casper Brooker was there. That was quite impressive. Yeah, he's a great skateboarder. Um... Yeah, I mean, everyone was there. It was like a full industry mm. it was melting pot. Wasn't it? Skateboarding was pissed. in the building. I didn't, I didn't drink, but you know, you should have got. Well, that's, well, you're driving back that same night, wasn't you? Drive back, yeah. It's a long day trip. Yeah, yeah. But four we used to do Burnley back. from Southampton to skate for like four hours and then drive for. It's mad, six isn't it? Like, but back. then, I mean, when was that? Like uh, early nineties and. Mid-90s. Late, late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. yeah. You just kind of did that then because there, was, there wasn't much going on, was there? Yeah. You're like, I'll just go there that day. And... But there was like a whole posse of people who would go yeah. to events then. And you'd be like, well, I'm going to go and hang out with my mates. Like, mm. Who was skating in Burnley at that time? Was Foz from around there? 
Fozzy's from Berlin, isn't he? Or well, he's from, it's is it Oswald Whistle? Somewhere. Can you Google there. that, please, Fraser? Because I'm, sure Fo- I'm sure I always hear Foz saying something Burnley related. Yeah, he always has it on the T-shirts, doesn't he? It's Hong Kong, Tokyo, or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. LA, London. LA, yeah. Burnley. Burnley. But he's yeah. actually from, it's the little village. And I know it, when you say it, Rawthen... Rawthen. No, it's... Uh, it'll say somewhere, but he's from a little village, which is up that way, northwest. Yeah. Right, okay, let's start. So... When did you... Uh, skateboarding, Mr. Churchill? When, when did, did you start, you start sk- skateboarding? I was, I was asking that. I know, but I've been, so I've, been, I've been looking over some old episodes recently, and you always start off... When did you start skating? I was when, like, I'm going to snake him on it. And So, Mr. Churchill, when did you start skateboarding? You should have interrupted yeah, then. It would have been gold. That. You missed an opportunity. It's right, when I, I, was seven. I edit them, so... What year was that? I don't know. How old are you now? 46 next month. Wow, happy birthday for next so, month. So, yeah, 31, 39 years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Can you work that out? Um, started when he was he, seven. He just told you. No, I can't work that What year? Roughly, roughly, oh, okay. Back to the Future had come out, so, so I'm 80. one of those lot. So, yeah, so, well, no. I think I was knocking around on a board, but not properly. Just going around on my knees on some rubbish thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was born in 78. So seven years after that, I was knocking around. But when I saw Martin McFly getting towed, I was, was like, that's what I need to be doing. Yeah. That's what I need in my life. We I knew about nothing it. about it. Yeah. Just but fresh it, it was just... You need that. That's yeah. what... Like, look at that. You can yeah. go around and do stuff. It wasn't about doing tricks. It was just, there was, I can move along on this thing. Yeah. It was Smedley that we were talking about, the importance of Back to the Future. Was yeah, it, well, or was that Police well, Academy? Well, because there was Police Academy 4, wasn't there, with the skateboarding scene, and that was 88, 89. Back to the Future was around then too. And there the was whole Gle- Bones Brigade in Gleam that, in the it? Cube yeah. as well. Yeah. So 88, that's when there was a big... That's when I started. It was like the big kind of everyone got into it. I think if you were at the prime age to get into something, yeah, then it was your thing. You yeah. would do it. Um, BMX bandits. Other people went. Oh, I'll go that way because I can go down a flume with Nicole Kidman and yeah, all of that. But yeah, it was either BMX or skateboarding. But I had a BMX. It was just it wasn't really for me. Like there was something, some sort of weird thing that resonated that it was like, that's what I need to do. Yeah, it's weird because I was the same with it. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yep, there mm. we go. Seems that's... like a lot of people at that time, all, everyone we spoke to said that they started off BMXing or had a BMX at least before they got into skateboarding. Yeah, I so mean... It seems you, like a good gateway. I mean, in the eight, in the mid 80s, everyone had a bike anyway. It was a BMX, mm. wasn't it? It was just... So you grew up in Southampton, right? Yeah, born in Surrey, moved to Southampton because yeah. my dad worked at the oil refinery. So, nice. but I was on the New Forest side, so I was in the country. So not many skate spots. It's pretty right. kind of one road in, one road out, yeah. rough kind of place, drink and fight kind of atmosphere. Uh, and who, if you were a skating kid at kick out time, it wasn't really a great fact. place to be. Yeah, yeah. Who was uh, your crew back then? When did uh, Don Brider and those kind of people... I didn't meet those guys till much later. Oh, right. Much later, because I couldn't... I didn't really go into town. I didn't have any money, and... Yeah, we we weren't a rich family, so... And it was about 50-odd minutes to get into Southampton, so from... Because you've got the Solent that goes up, and you've got the New Forest on one side, and then Southampton Centre, and I was over this side, so you could either get the ferry across, which is quite cool, real Hmm. long pier and a pier train that you go on a real old school um or get the, the bus round the bus was cheaper but Take yeah it was it. quite tough to get into town to go skating but i only met those those guys a lot later but the the crew was a couple of people from around my area my brother and his mate johnny a couple of other people you know and it was quite cool because certain people could do like someone learned kick flips and it was like the yeah. hell like yeah and some people could do rock and rolls on mini ramps and stuff but we only had like one ramp um offbeat sports were they around at this point was that where yeah. you got your first board from and i think offbeat was maybe the second shop ever was it i think so so he did like bmx stuff right back in the day it was the first company to or first shop to give away free grip with a board so ruined it for everyone else <laughs> fucked it for everyone 
<coughs> yeah, so they were they were still going, but they were in in town. So I remember like that classic going with your dad before Christmas, and yeah. or with your mum and dad. You'd be like, oh yeah, that one's cool, that one's cool, and you'd go off. Your dad had to go and do something, and then you'd end up with that. But yeah. it was very much you'd get a board at Christmas or the undercarriage, yeah, like you or maybe a pair of shoes. You couldn't get everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was too expensive, way too expensive. Yeah. And it lasted a long time. What's though. nuts to me is a setup is relatively the same price. Well, we spoke about this recently. We, and we were looking at inflation compared to what boards should worth be. Skateboards ten p nowadays. Yeah, I mean, even boards in nineteen ninety five should be, if they, you know, they were same, you know, the, if they follow inflation, inflation, it's two hundred plus. It was right? two hundred and fifty quid a day, yeah. and still boards are sub hundred quid most yeah. of them. So yeah, it's yeah, it's fucked. I mean, I remember going into phase seven in wolf and cross and 65 for power boards mm. it was a lot of money there yeah in unobtainable yeah but in today's money it's ridiculous it's but that's incredible. what's kept skateboarding up i think yeah. as an accessible thing to do yeah i mean it's more it's easier mountain biking now, isn't snowboarding it? skiing it's expensive, isn't it? all oh, these things are very rich bonkers yeah. yeah yeah you've got to be from a certain background or have help in a certain way to, yeah. to go and do those things but skateboarding sort of you can just go down out there yeah and just well that's have always the best time that's all yeah exactly that's always been the good thing about skating because <coughs> you don't need anything really apart from a skateboard you don't need anything in particular to do it yeah do you? you don't you need can. snow or you don't need mates which is why <laughs> i liked it and the thing is as well people will complain <laughs> about a board price going up but you'll still find your next brand that you can get a board for 40 50 quid yeah. well i mean i mean look at what we have on offer here you can get a complete board for 35 quid and it's if pretty that, good it's a lot better it'll turn a good introduction to it's, yeah, it's a good first what board. I started on yeah I mean I had a Turbo 2 as my first board and it was classic it was just yeah. plastic yeah you everything know? was plastic yeah. apart from the fixing bolts and the bearings and I used it till the wheels started peeling off the yeah. inner core bit you yeah know, you just um, yeah Foz is from Rawton Stall Raw, Raw, Raw st- oh, I don't fuck Rawton Stall no it's not a th- is it it's a Rawton Raw, Stall, Raw, stall. Lancashire. He's from Lancashire. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Um, <laughs> Bit of knowledge for you there. <laughs> what was your first board you got from Offbeat then? Like, what was your first... <coughs> did Did you get your first proper board from there? Or did no, you have a board? no. First board was from the skate shop, Paul. Right. Because oh, yeah. they I've were... The, there, yeah. yeah, they were the OGs. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was... It had Gullwing Phoenix on it, I think. Yeah. Black Kryptonics. Nice. It was only thin. It was like a tiny little... Like almost like a slalom board, big black tail saver on it, which went oh, all furry right. and yeah, furry. No, yeah, just from sliding oh, on your right, tail yeah, going down yeah, the road, yeah. and it used to fur up and I'd trim it off. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was great. It was smooth because our roads are all like rough tarmac and yeah. stuff like that. So I would use that to skate to school, and that was my, like my thing. I was yeah. like the one kid who was allowed to skate to school because it would. Have you got any photos of you of your first board? No. Nah. No, uh, my dad might. See if you can get somewhere. Up, uh, we'll put them on the screen now as you're talking about it. There's some old ones of me yeah. at South Sea back in the day with a dog pout town in like Malba. With a beard and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah probably a longer beard. <laughs> a longer beard? Wow. Just one longer eyebrow. Oh, nice. No. Uh, yeah, there's not that many photos of me skating, I don't yeah. know, back in the day. It was harder to do things with those like point and shoot mm. film cameras back then. I've got very few photos. I found one of me skating a Mike Carroll H Street board recently. I bet you look the exact same as well. Pretty much. Black t-shirt, grey one underneath. I got ID'd for booze on Friday night. Well done. Yeah, really pleased with that. Did you have a hat on? No, I don't wear hats. I haven't got it. My head's a bit weird. Yeah. I've got a very funny shaped head. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like looking at it, yeah, triangle. it looks a bit odd. Yeah, I've got a very funny... Anyway, <laughs> anyway let's talk about skating. <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into When zone. did he's, it start? He's sensitive about it. <coughs> yeah, when... let's not talk about the head. He did say that at the beginning as well. Yeah. He? <coughs> he said Try not to pay any attention to my head. He said, there's one thing I don't want you to do, it's look at my head. Now I can't help. But look at All I can do is look at it, gaze at it. <laughs> yeah. It's good though. It's a nice head. When did you get first? First, <laughs> when did you first get sponsored, and how did that come about? Let's talk. What about were your first sponsors? Off I think my no, no, no. Weird. This is a weird one. So I used to go to Newcastle a lot, and my Fun friend, time. yeah, 
my friend got a shop to give me a board. I think it was like a musker or something like that from the, a shop you, called oh, a Wilderness board. Ways. Southampton to Newcastle is like another country, basically. Yeah, but, but I had family up there. Right, yeah. Um, who I didn't really see that much, but... Yeah. Yeah, I had friends up there and would go and stay with them. And, yeah, just used to skate that monument and everything. Used to see Gordon Skreska, like, every now and then and be like, whoa, Skreska. oh, my God. Yeah, Skreska. 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 He was very good. Very, very, yeah, I bet he's yeah, still he's, very where good. Where's he from? Who is it? He's, well, he lived in Oxford for a long time, didn't he? Or did he? Or am I, I making that up? I don't know if he lived in Oxford, but no, I know he was up around that way. North it's like a ripper. Yeah, like a British Eric Pupecki kind of. Okay. Yeah, really good. Legend. Yeah. Still out there, do you think? Oh, yeah, I would. I would Still skating? Say. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. On social media or anywhere? Andrew Horsley or no? Horsley or no? Call Horsley no. He's on. He's on socials, I think. I think I'll follow him. Scresco. Right. Yeah, I seem to. Yeah, I think he's popped up. Um, I might have to so you got a free board off of that shop? <laughs> yeah, it? and a hat. And, and I was like, whoa, I think I'm sponsored. But it was just that, I think. <laughs> Yeah, but what board was I'd it? I'd class it as a sponsor. I think it was a musker, some sort of weird, for some reason, like a blue and yellow graphic. But I don't know. I think sure it, it might musker. have been a toy machine. Oh, wow. musker. Oh. So we're talking oh, really? then. Yeah, should've kept that. That would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. could have. That was that was short lived, weren't it? Yeah, musker on toy machine was short lived. Not sure if it. Yeah, I don't know. So that must have been like ninety four, ninety five, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe a little bit earlier. I'm not sure. I think we'll be yeah, to just, find a picture of it. I was kicking around, like, just being at things. And yeah. I, you know, money was short. You couldn't really get around. A lot of time on the National Express going mm. here and there. Um, but I remember the main thing was that I'd gone into Offbeat because I started hanging out and going into town and meeting people. And Chris said, oh, you should put a tape together and I'll give it to the guys at Shiner. And they'd, oh, they'd right. like to see something. And I was yeah. like, okay. And that was like my first thought of sort of, mm. well, what, what do I do? Mm. I need to do a sponsor me tape, which was like quite a big deal. I was like, well, you can't fuck about. You can't, mm. there's no filler tricks. I could only do filler tricks at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, like that was when I, got a real sponsor and that was like a full package deal with Santa Cruz, Roofies Grip, Crux Trucks, Richter Wheels, Bones Bearings. So they just hooked you up like that straight yeah. away? You yeah, sent the physical tape to them? Yeah. Have you got the physical tape? I have got the phys I've got, got one a, physical tape have of you a got copy it digital? of digital? No. Oh, I'd love to see we that. Need to, can I'd you post to it to us so we can digitalise so, yeah. it? I've Gary. just moved so I've got all of my high eights Digital eights. Oh, rad. Everything. So I need to digitize all of that. You've got a tape deck and I've got the VHS. I just haven't had time to get on. But I have I got a VHS with my old address written on it, my name and age and stuff like so, that. So oh, get a picture for us all so right. we can overlay it. That'll be good to see. <coughs> so you did one sponsor tape, send it to Shiner, and you got hooked up by all them brands straight away. Yeah. Fucking Not hell, bad for good. all filler. It was, it, well, yeah, I was pretty. Hyped. I mean, but before that, I'd got bits and bobs from people, but that was yeah. the main thing. Because yeah. I got five borough boards somehow through. No, so Mark Penman was getting five borough boards and he gave me a board. But then I was on Rookie at the mm -hmm. same kind of time as Pritch. Right, yeah. And I just didn't really get enough boards. And I would go through boards because I was trying to run off bus stops and all sorts of things. Like Who else was on Rookies at that time? Was that the one that Simpson was on? Simpson was on it. Yeah. Andy Simpson. Yeah, he was, was on, it. on it. I don't know. I don't think so. But I know Pritch was on it at some time period yeah. through it. Simpson was on it when I was on it. Who was we talking to about that? Because did Pritch we ask, up. was it a fully, fe was it a female run company? Did you ask yeah, a question? Yeah. I um, yeah. yeah. can't remember her name now. But you had Sarah Sackis, vert skater from New York way or from... The East Coast yeah, way. Yeah, we were talking and, about Pritchard going out to New York with Simps in the Rockies time. Yeah. There was, there was some really good core skaters on it. Mm. I was getting boards for them while. not long because I, I remember I went to like a, a comp at Radlands and I had one board and it was pretty knackered. Mm -hmm. And I snapped it two days before and I was like, I need a board for this. Yeah. 
And I think it was Matt Law that was doing it back then. And he was like, no, I can't sort you out of board. You've had too many this month or something like that. And mm. then Mark Payman gave me a five bar. And I won the competition on this late. Back then it was an 8.5. Oh, but wow. Back then I was getting a 7.8. So I bet it people was a were looking at jump. it like, yeah, what people were like, that? "What is that weird dragster thing you're skating?" Yeah, and it was amazing. Did you have trucks to fit it, or did you? No, just I think I just had hanging some little <laughs> things. Yeah, that's wild. <clears throat> so real, real bad wheel bite and everything, but yeah, it was amazing. And that was when I went, "I need to skate bigger boards." Like, mm. but then I started skating a seven nine or something like that because <laughs> yeah. you couldn't Massive, really get. Man. Like all the the big boards were all old school shapes back then, yeah. and old school shapes weren't that available. There, there yeah. would be a few in the cement shed in China or whatever, but oh, kids don't realise now around. how it's like every board company will make every size and shape. Yeah. Whereas, like even when I started, like when did I start? Like two thousand four or five. Even then, it was just like that late. You started... Seven seven five to eight knew... inch. I started in the like the hot. Sh Bam, element volume one era. That was sick. That was yeah. such a sick era to I get guess into that's it. Like it's quite a, a boom. Like, like there was yeah. the Tony Hawk tours going on. So yeah. there was like everyone Adio, riding on the secret back of that. Tony Hawk tours. Yeah. But that's that's when I got into it, like 2003. <clears throat> I was born in 91, so 2003. So when I was like 12 drink or 13. Yeah, yeah, sure. 12 or, um, 12 or 13, roughly. What size board are you riding now? 8.6. And you've been eight, on that six, for a while? 8, seven, yeah. Some on 825, I go up to Deluxe to the 828, a little smidgen wider. Right. And then I drill the wheelbase back. But See, I, that's the key yeah. of having the right wheelbase. Exactly. This is to the right width. All the time. And it makes so much difference. Yeah. So you can go wider, but it's so still, the thing is, it if still you're, reacts to If your you're feet. doing a backsmith, say, on a pool I've or something. I've never done one in a pool, especially not in a pool. It's an easy trick with your feet closer together. Right. Because your foot's out of the way. So yeah. if you've got a smaller wheelbase, you start doing that naturally. Mm -hmm. And then you, because when I went on to Witchcraft, they had a smaller wheelbase, but a wider board. Yep. And I was like, whoa, this is nuts. Yeah. Board flips around quicker and everything. Yep. Everyone thinks, oh, whatever. It's like quarter of a millimeter. And it's like, makes all the difference. Science. It, mm. it does. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something about where your feet stand just when you're rolling along. Yeah. Because you know that whole look good, feel good. Yeah. When you look down at your board and it looks sick, you've yeah. got a pair of half cabs on or... Always half cabs. Like, yeah. And, and your board just looks, even if it's thrashed, but it looks sick, Yeah, it's almost better to skate. Yeah. You know that board that you can't take apart because you because it's too good? Like that is what I'm about. So, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd stayed on the same board size for so long mm -hmm. like, because it works. Yeah. And if it works, like, why change it? It's so what's classic. wheelbase on that 8.6? I don't know. know. It's just the standard 86 Santa Cruz board yeah. is the one. 14.25, I bet. Google that. 14 See, that's that's how I feel about... I love skating the Lee Ralph Vision, like the man crushed into the board, but obviously a new concave. But that's... What's that? 15-inch wheelbase? Yeah. But because it's got no nose on it, it Still naturally good. looks really... 14.25. Sure. It looks really yep, short. There you go. Got that right. It looks... Well done, mate. Well done. I appreciate you. See, I've, there are some skills other than doing the Rubik's Magic. No hand on BMX. But anyway, yeah. Just shit it skills. Looks really, I've, I've it looks tried really to skate short. a board with no nose, and it just kills me. I can't do it. See, the Lee Ralph with no nose is the, f the first board that I learned low to Smith locks on. Because there was such a short nose, it, I couldn't lean too far into the ramp. Okay. I yeah. know that on a low you got to kind of be... But I don't know, Some if I do it on a bigger nose, I tend to slip out a bit easier into back D. But with a small nose, I guess it's less weight at the front and I can just... Plus, I've got the 60 millimeter slime balls on. And well, you can kind of cheat and lock it mm. in on the back of your board to pivot it round to the Smith so as well. It's interesting, like... I don't know, you've got people who've got a vert board or a street board or whatever. Mm. I would always skate the same board same on board, yeah. same size wheels or whatever. Yeah. But different tricks are available on different boards, aren't oh, they? Oh, 100%, like, yeah. You're not going to skate the mega ramp on a freestyle board, although I'd like to see that. Imagine that. Who's going to do it? Come on, Bob. Step it out. I know you're watching. Jesse Thomas is ridiculously good. He could probably do something. <laughs> yeah. Like some... Jesse Thomas can do whatever he wants. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that clip he put up where he does the... What is it? It's like it's a like a, it's like it a, a trail slide. No, because he doesn't grab it trail. He no. just grabs it nose. He does he a lean tail slide. Lean tail slide. Wheels on the platform. Yeah. 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 yeah like a lean and lip Jansen slide. But not. shared that. 
Man, he's good. Yeah. Is he Not Andy Saturday? Anderson. Jesse, Jesse, but Andy Anderson is also good. Jesse's he's, amazing. He's like, the weekend, isn't he? Um, how did you... What came first? So, sorry, Santa Cruz through them. Santa Cruz would have been first. And then where did Witchcraft come into that? There was Creature as well. So I went there? on to Creature. So we did a, a Santa Cruz tour around the, the UK. Days when people could do tours. Yeah. Bring back tours. They're important. Was it a Santa Cruz X Creature UK tour? Because no. there was one of those as no, well, right, was, in the UK. I wasn't on that one. Yeah. So I went on the Santa Cruz tour with Sid Melvin, Emmanuel Guzman, mm-hmm. Alex Carolino, Flo. Did like, you come to Derby on that tour? I seem to remember a yeah, story about the Danny Callow having a fight with one of them because he, he, he splattered some curry on his football shirt or something. I don't remember that. <laughs> Did what, Danny... was the, what was the pub with the ramp in? The Blue Dog. Blue Dog, not yeah. the Black Dog. Blue Dog. Yeah, so we skated that. But <clears throat> we we did that tour and then sort of halfway through the tour, the team manager was like, hey, we're bringing Creature back. We think you'd be a better fit. We want you to be on the team to right. do Creature. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'd been on Santa Cruz for so long at that point. Yeah. How I was long? Like, well, this is this. Okay, cool. This is one of those moments where you make a decision when you feel like maybe you shouldn't or mm-hmm. you need to think about something, but you say yes. Yeah. Like, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, let's get in touch. Sorry. And um, see see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then they started sending boxes to China and they, these boxes were so ginormous. So it was a direct thing? Yeah. yeah how, how, a, what were you getting in boxes? Four, I don't know. How like many boards? Ten boards, nice. two sets of indies, five hoodies. 20 t-shirts every month it was ridiculous it blows my mind when every I see. month it was bonkers because i would uh... drive on the last friday from work to china and pick stuff up and hang out <laughs> in bristol and actually jerome and yeah joe and everyone love jerome best best human but these i'd see these boxes one day with an open one and it was like a double length double width thing yeah. and it was just jam-packed full of stuff I'm like, for you this is bonkers. I'm like, well, who needs a hoodie? Who yeah, needs yeah. boards? Like, put, There's get, only make so sure much everybody that... else gets it yeah. blows this my mind. stuff. I don't need all of this. When I see someone open a package and they've got five pairs of trucks, I'm like, who's going through well, that I guess many with trucks, trucks? Like, you know, there might be a few different sizes, but also in last year, six months or something like that. But I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's getting a load of pool coping. It <clears> lasts <throat> a lot less long, but yeah. I wasn't scaring that much pool coping then. But Were you... At the time when you were getting sent direct packages, were you getting paid by Creature nah. or any of them as well? No, nah, it was just no. just these packages would turn up and... Did you ever yeah. sell any of them? The packages? Yeah. No, they would all no. go to whoever needed like stuff and, there and to yeah. the rest of the team, I guess. Like, Wait, hold on a sec, we need to talk about sponsoring this episode of The Brain Drain Show, the podcast you're enjoying listening to right now. Toby, who is it? Today's show sponsor is Heathen Skateboards. Let's just cut to the chase. Let's hand it over to the Crowman to explain all the details. In three, two, one. Listen up, Grebos. You know how much I love you, yeah you, specifically. Well I've got a beautiful gift for one of you from round the back of my nest. A special hand-picked hidden package including a board, some clothes and a peck of other goodies. All you have to do to enter is follow at Heathen Skateboards on Instagram and comment Crowman lives on the, the pinned post. Kiss my beak. Bye. Oh, he's a bit intense, isn't he? Yeah, let's just let's just go back to the show. Back to the show. The Santa Cruz tour that led you to Creature, then there was a Creature tour, wasn't there? Is that around the time that Ben Devine was shortly on? Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, R.I.P. Ben. And it was, a Hereford, um, there was a Hereford show. Show? Yeah, I wasn't Skate on that. Um, I had a car crash uh, when I was around 30. So about 15, 16 years ago. What happened in a that, car crash? Oh, it was like a 16 car pile up and we were the first car to crash. And oh, gnarly. I completely destroyed the whole left-hand side of my body. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't do much at all. Yeah. And then for like nine months, I was on painkillers and yeah. like couldn't feel my foot for so long. I started skating way earlier because I was off my head on drugs and yeah. made myself worse tore some more internal stuff mm-hmm. um yeah it was 
pretty bad, but then I didn't hear from Creature at all. Yeah. I sent an email saying, hey, I've had this accident, going to be out for a while, and didn't really hear anything back. And then I was like, well, okay. And then as I started getting better, I'd put on loads of weight. I was starting to skate again and relearning, but I mm. couldn't, I still can't bend over left properly. My ribs just don't flex no, enough. Allow it, yeah. So to gra do grabs with the front hand, it was like, very difficult mm -hmm. so i had to relearn how to skate differently yeah but to still get the enjoyment of how i skated mm -hmm. it was like well i've got to learn different lip tricks i've got to learn different stuff mm -hmm. and do things differently um which was a, a challenge yeah. but i kind of made it work do you still get any issues from the car accident now yeah, I get pretty bad pleurisy every now and then. Right. So um, I remember hearing about it. It sounded fucking awful. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. 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 I mean, I had to I'm, get you know. out of the car and yeah. there was cars all crashing around me. And mm. what what had, what had gone on to cause to it? Or? Someone had left a car on the outside lane, a black car, a Corsa. So a small black car on the outside lane with the boot facing the central reservation. And the car in front of us swerved and we just plowed straight into it, going pretty fast. Oh, no. So and it, I, I took all the impact on my side and yeah, yeah the car went flying off down the motorway, but we just stayed there and then all sixteen other cars crashed and then lorries were coming, our car caught on fire and. Fuck's sake! You said there were people <clears throat> dead. Yeah, this, yeah, right. there was a dude that w I walked down the motorway. Did you manage to get out fairly quickly after the? I couldn't get out the door and my left side was so done in I couldn't open the door. Yeah, so I threw myself out the window. It's like my first spiritual moment in my whole life ever. Mm. But I was sat in the car and I was like, I can't breathe. My lung had gone down. My, le my ribs were all snapped. Like pretty much every rib was broken. And I was like, um, I'm probably pretty safe in the car. And I look around and there's like lorry lights and cars just going sideways, all like slow motion. And then in I was gonna say, did something I just went, get out of the car now. Yeah. And mm. it was... I'm going to you say, know, did like it go in slow motion? Sort of thing. I mean, when the crash happened, I still remember, I still see the glass from the window just going in front of me like this, almost like you could just go. What? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the new Marvel films with the Flash yeah, or yeah. with that other dude in the X Men running around yeah, really yeah. fast. Yeah. And it's slow. It's like that. It's like yeah. That's exactly how it is. That's mad. And uh, yeah, I got out of the car. And what's weird is as I was walking down the, the outside lane in the motorway a car had hit our car and then other cars in the lane and a car folded round me so i was exactly where i should be to not get hit by another car and die Fuck. so the car skidded round me and i still hear the wheels go boop, 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 and it went spinning down the motorway and then other cars crashed and i walked a little way down and got under the central reservation and put my feet up and then that's when I noticed, I was like, oh my God, my leg is not in a good way. My mm -hmm. foot, like as I'd got out of the car, my foot had gone back into position and Ooh. everything, but it was still not right. real bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, w I was under the motorway and that's when someone had got left, like who'd got hit, got mm. left next to me and they got run over loads of times and yeah. they were just there. Oh, so, insane. Yeah. So I was facing down the motorway with my feet up and he was facing up the motorway with his, just in the lane next to me. So it was pretty gnarly. It was a dark night, a really dark night. So it was horrible. the lights would go on and then it'd be like, -da -da -da, as they got run over, like as cars were still going. Through. How it was, did it, how did it affect you seeing that? Well, that, that affected me massively. That probably yeah. affected me more than the crash itself yeah. and the physical yeah. stuff. Like I had to go to counseling. I had to do stuff. I would, I remember I was in uh, Sainsbury's after I could leave the house and walk properly and do stuff on my own because I was in inside for months on drugs that just made you dribble and sit and do nothing because yeah. I was so internally done in. But it meant I could be at home, so they just completely immobilised me. Yeah. But I remember I was in Sainsbury's, stood opposite some uh, strawberries, and I was just crying my eyes out, bawling, and this old woman came up and held my hand. She's like, you all right? I was like, yeah. I don't even know why I'm crying. Yeah. And I would have these episodes, the dreams and things like that, reenacting it. The dreams were the worst because 
it would be so intense and it would be watching it from like a drone's view or something. And yeah, it was, it had such a massive impact on my mental health and on how fragile you are, but how invincible you are as well at the same mm -hmm. time. And then going back into skateboarding, cause I'd had loads of head injuries, got scars on the back of my head, like broken stuff, wrists, ankles, everything like every skateboarder has. Mm -hmm but you're still invincible. Mm -hmm. Like you, your mortality is not there. But when you have something like that and you see someone who has died and you're not, you get the survivor guilt, you get all sorts of these things that people tell you about or that you see in films or in TV shows. But then when you're living it, it's so more hard to deal with. And you, when you go back to skateboarding, you go back to skateboarding a little bit more fragile. So it's harder to commit. Yeah, to yeah. handrails and to things like that, that I particularly felt more alive skating a handrail and playing games with myself because I would go towards a handrail and in the streets, a real proper handrail because there wasn't that many people really doing rails back yeah. then. There was, there was, you know, some people out there getting stuff done and yeah. you'd see US videos where handrails are every third trick or something like that. Yeah. And it was like, this is what I want to do. It's scary. And you skate your local park handrail and it'd be all right. But I'd skate towards it and be like, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do this. You're going to fuck yourself up. You're going to do this. And I'd be like, yeah, shut up. Watch this. To myself in my yeah. own head. Like as crazy skateboarders have to do yeah. things. Like every skateboarder has an argument at some point with themselves in their head. Yeah. So that stuff became harder because you can fall off and die. You yeah. can, yeah. you know, and you're not, you're, I mean, those odds of someone doing that are quite low. Mm -hmm. The more skateboarders there are doing crazy stuff, those odds are obviously going to go up. But yeah, yeah, it was quite hard to commit to certain stuff and to throw yourself around as much. But the trauma to my body was, I was never going to skate how I skated. And I feel like, and a couple of people have said this, like Pete King and people like that have said, I was skating my best at that point. Mm. And it's, that's the world going, come on. Yeah. That's enough for you. Because yeah. um, part of like my compensation and stuff for the crash, uh, there was an email from Lee from Creature saying that I was going to go out and start doing stuff or things like that through Jerome and, and stuff like that. So to sort of be able to deal with the dream being taken away. You're like, well, maybe I'd have gone out there, done a handrail and died or something mm. like that. And I needed to not. So this was mm. the way to stop me Yeah, was to put me on the edge of death and take me on a different route. I don't know, just ways of justifying stuff in your brain. And <laughs> yeah, but what's amazing with skateboarding is that there's always a different way to skate. And that's, what's amazing about skateboarding now is everything's accepted, but mm. back coming into those days it was a kind of getting there but yeah a little bit before that you couldn't do weird shit you couldn't do certain tricks they were like mm. no you can't do that you Illegal can't do it they're like no way yeah, yeah. We, we spoke about that sort of thing before and it's, <coughs> you can pretty much do whatever you want now it's skating, amazing and there's people who will uh support and encourage that i mean look at andy anderson one of the place. most loved skateboarders yeah, that's and what I mean. one, of, one of the best dudes and yeah He's doing stuff no one does and, yeah. and everyone loves it. I love where him. he's at now because I think when he first started with the helmet, people just took the piss out of him from what I remember. And then he went to like Tampa and loads of comps and just showing how fucking good he is. Well, he just did his and, thing, and didn't he? And he's, and he's that good. And just did it. He's that good at doing everything. Yeah. People can't take the piss out of him if he wears a helmet yeah. or not. But now. I think that's what you got to do. <clears throat> like, you've got to just get on and let your skateboarding yeah. speak for your skateboarding. I mean, yeah. Somewhere in between all of this stuff, I started doing rad on Channel 5. So I got pushed into a limelight that I wasn't ready for and mm. didn't see coming. And a lot of people were like, well, who the hell is this guy? And I wasn't very liked that much. So I would just went, cool, I'm going to gap this driveway to a lip slide that no one's ever done. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this big handrail. And I'm going to do these things. And, and I'm going to be a skateboarder first. And I found that so more important yeah. because... I identified as a skateboarder before mm -hmm. anything else I ever did. Yeah. And that was what I was. And I, it was important that people knew that to me. It wasn't important about 
being on TV or being on in a magazine or whatever, it was important about going skateboarding and skateboarding to the point mm. where you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to go home completely exhausted, covered in blood. That was my good day. That was like, mm. I had a good day today. If you wake up and the sheets are stuck to your hip, yeah, you skated well yesterday. You know, I was going to, I was going to ask like, how long was it after the crash to presenting? I'd done the presenting on Channel Five when I was like 17, 18. and but how did that first come about back then? The first well, I went to a right? competition in Munich, and Christian Stevenson was mm. there, and it was in a velodrome. And I was skating the walls of the velodrome and just doing weird stuff away from the comp. And I ended up getting a train, a tube home with him. I was on the same flight home, got the thing, and he got on the tube. And I remember we were, every time the tube went, I guess it was Heathrow, and every time it went through a tunnel, we would be surfing, jumping mm. on the seats and just messing around as kids. And then he was like, come and stay at my squat in um, Camden. You know, are you going home? And I was like, no, I'll just go there. And I didn't have a clue who he was. And he, he was making snowboard videos. And he he ended up being, or he just got the job as the van's team manager. So he was like, I want to give you shoes. And I was like, okay. And then I guess that was maybe my one of my first sponsors. Hmm. Yeah. that Because you've been associated with vans for, I mean, forever pretty yeah, much, haven't you? Yeah. Very, very long time since yeah. they were in Rickmansworth or, yeah, yeah whatever. But... Um, he then phoned up one day or got hold of me and said, we're going to, I think it might've been on that trip. He said, we're going to shoot this pilot for a TV series. Do you want to come on it? And I was like, well, you know, what do you want me to do? And he said, well, we'll give you a hundred quid. I went, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. A hundred <laughs> yeah. quid. Like I could survive <clears throat> for six months off of that pretty <laughs> much. Um, so they paid for me to go up to London like six months later or whatever and filmed, I think the Ollie, mm -hmm. something like that, and did a little tutorial of how to do it. And then they put that into a pilot and sent it off for the pilot show of, of Rad. A few months later, they phoned me up and said, oh, we won the pilot. Oh, right. You know, we, it's, it's gonna happen. This TV show is gonna happen. I was like, great, best of luck with it. Thought, why are you phoning me? I was a bit gloaty or whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. They were like, no, you're going to be on the show. And I went, well, what do you mean? They were like, you're going to be a presenter doing the tricks, teaching people how to do these tricks. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to do most of the tricks, but <laughs> right, I'll just teach the ones I know I can do. And yeah. It spiraled off from that as well, didn't it? Like, was there a tour? Was there a tour on one of the shows that you were doing? Like a little you? But it was I, the, the, I'm the, sure it was the Grom thing. stuff, but yeah. I didn't go on that because because my remember. deal was a certain price per show which yeah. went up at some point, but then they wanted me to go and do the Grums tour for free. And yeah. I was like, well, you're You've paying me to do these. Yeah. Like, I can't do that for free. And they're like, well, we'll pay for your expenses. I'm like, that's just a bit lame. Everyone, everyone else is getting paid. Yeah. And I should have done it because it was to Australia, the first one. Yeah. And I've still not been to Australia, but I stuck to my principles and was like, well, no, mm. like, you know, if you want me to come and work, you got to pay me to work. Like, because you're going to get something from me. So no, and I turned it down. So I didn't who do was it. Who is it on that show? I'm sure there was a van with the faces of who was on the tour. Someone didn't show up, and they got crossed out. I can't remember. That's all. That's all I remember. That's all I can remember from it. <coughs> but I can is remember it? watching Rad as a Sam kid as Bruce well. Sam Bruce and Lucian Clark and Mikey Wright and everyone was it? Yeah, I'm sure their pictures were on like a and Ben like a tour bus, and someone got crossed out because they didn't mm. show up. But I think it was Val that did the crossing out. But anyway, yeah, I used to watch the Rad stuff on Channel 5 as a kid. How long did that mm. go on for with Rad? I think at the time I felt like it went on for longer than it did. Yeah. But we would do maybe 12 shows a season or something like that. Yeah. Maybe four or five seasons or something. Mm -hmm. right. Andy Evans will correct, mm. put it in the comments. But I'd love to get um, Andy Evans on. Oh, you should. You should definitely. Mm. I think we've tried, have we tried to contact remember. him more? You can contact him for us. I'll headlock him, bring him yeah. up myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, w at one point we switched over. We, we did a new series and they brought yeah. Andy in yeah. to do yeah. our bits. And that's when we got really silly with it and started doing Hunt for the Golden Rail and mm. all these all these silly things, which at the time 
I was maybe trying to be a little bit cooler than I thought I was and didn't, I, I knew it was funny and I knew it was messing around, but I think I was trying to be a little bit more, no, we should be a little bit core and all of this stuff. But it was amazing. It was great because they, they gave us free reign, basically. There would be one guy that, you know, that would sign it off upstairs, you know, after everyone else had seen it. It was like, we're going to do this thing and we shot this ridiculous title sequence and all these things that back now would be great if it was on TV. If someone yeah, else yeah. did it, it would be brilliant. It'd be so silly and I think it would be better accepted now. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it was amazing. It was so much fun. So I did all of that presenting and then at the time of them doing the Groms tour and everything, I was like, well, I've got all these sponsors. I'm starting to get paid by Vans. Mm -hmm. I can't survive, but I'm going to just pursue my skateboarding and I'm just going to do as much as I can on that. Yeah. What was your, what was your, <clears throat> what was the pay for doing those things? At first it was a hundred quid. It was monthly by no, per episode. Per episode. Or yeah. And then I, negotiated to get per day did you have an agent sorting out no for you? you did it all no, yourself did it all well i'd asked the guys that worked on it and yeah. that was inherently the problem mm -hmm. but then i negotiated up to 375 pound a day which yeah. was amazing because that was such a massive amount of money yeah yeah and i remember i used to take checks into the halifax or no the midland bank with the broadcasting corporation written on it and they would give me down payments on it straight away in cash because they knew the, the check would cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was th then that was good, but that was towards like the last series and that yeah, didn't yeah. last, but we did some really cool stuff. We went up this big hill in London and Graham Cox Coxon was on it from blur. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shut up, mate. I'm trying to do the intro for this show <laughs> and he's pretending to busk. Yeah. But, I taught him how to kickflip up there. And oh, right. We spoke about skateboarding a lot. He's a big skateboarding fan. And nice. Then I was like, play Enter Sandman and he'd play it or play Slayer and stuff like that. And he'd just be able to play whatever you asked. He'd yeah, like yeah. work it out. And then I was like, wow, that guy's very talented. Yeah, yeah. So we did some really cool people with cool things with cool people. Anyone with a slight bit of uh, skateboarding knowledge? We, Lee we Francis. Get Lee Francis. We he worked in the same office as us. So. We've tried or we've asked him and... He just keeps putting us onto his agent. Right. Yeah. Because he buys stuff from Roller Snakes as well. I'm sure he does. Yeah, he's, he's quite into it. So he, he skates with his kids. He was in the same office. We shared an office space and he was in there as a runner at first and then he was sort of coming up through the ranks. Mm. And we giggle away and... I don't know if this is real, maybe he can answer it, but I did the... Craig David sketch with yeah. Andy Evans yeah. in, in the office pretending, messing around and he was there. So maybe that was a little bit of you, inspiration. You inspired that? Maybe, maybe, who knows? Did That'd you be a get good the call, mask on as well? No, we just put a fake beard, like yeah. a fake moustache on upside down, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Craig David. Yeah, it was great. So, yeah, so I did, I did all of that stuff and then just concentrated on skateboarding mainly mm. and was just going nuts like coming out of bad relationships and just throwing myself at things and you know skateboarding is amazing how you can challenge mental health issues or challenging moments within your life absolutely through yeah. going <clears throat> skateboarding and you know <clears throat> i think you can get on a bike and ride and power through but i think you've still got space to think about things that are going on yeah but with skateboarding, even just bombing a hill, you can get taken out by the tiniest little stone drain cover or whatever. You've got to pay attention. So to get out of your own brain, yeah. the escapism of going skateboarding yeah. was very important to me from all sorts of things. Like my mum left quite when I was quite young and, and things like that. So I had all of these kind of undealt with things that I covered up with skateboarding. So I threw myself into skateboarding instead of dealing with some problems that I maybe had at the time and hadn't resolved but after the crash when things went wrong i would still go and do the odd demos on mini ramp and stuff like that but i was well on my way out of, of skateboarding mm. like and the next generation were that much better that it was like this is just embarrassing now mm -hmm. so i kind of just slowed down a bit but i remember bob sanderson had slagged off the organizers of Boardmasters because they'd given prizes out 
of like seven point five boards to vert skaters of these weird completes or something like that. Mm. Along the lines of that, and he, whilst MCing, just ripped into them, which I fully appreciate. I, love I think Bob. is amazing. He's the best. Mm. Yeah, he's rad. He's one of the greatest people to ever be around, let alone on the mic and mm -hmm. all of his catchphrases and everything. Um, so he got fired on the spot. <laughs> And Powley got hold of me and said, do you want to MC the vert stuff? We could and probably get like, him on, Bob. We should definitely get Bob on. We saw him, he did Black Mass, the first one, didn't he? In Birmingham. Yeah, 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 I was there just, with him. Yeah, it's funny. So yeah, Powley got hold of you. Because mm. Powley was involved with Vans as well at that time. Powley was he? involved in so much stuff. Yeah. And I don't think Nick gets enough credit for the amount of things that he made happen. Was he Vans TM UK, then? Yeah, but he did UK champs, UK mini ramp champs. All these things, yes. he put on all these things like the... Um, there was a lot of Vans UK tours Young going Guns on things. when he was involved. A lot going on with Vans. <clears throat> well, the first one that we went on, he was like the support vehicle that came along with us. And that mm. was like our introduction to Sid Cup. You know, yep. it was Nick him Sidcup. and... Yeah, so he doesn't get enough credit for a lot of the things that he made happen. He yeah. made skateboarding apparent for a very long period of time when yeah. nothing else was going on mm. and people would moan that things weren't happening. It's like, well, you do know Nick's just doing this off his own time. Like, yeah. You know, he could just yeah, stay Nick's at home rad. and selling stuff on eBay and smashing it, but he's, you know, using his own equipment that would always get destroyed. Someone would turn a knob and blow a speaker or whatever. Mm. <laughs> if you do with trimming his beard, his, <clears throat> his beard length starting to worry me a little bit. How does it worry you? It's just, it's nearly as long as he is. It is long. It's isn't like it? he does look like a filthy tramp that you would be like, "Oh, get away from me!" You yeah, horrible, rancid old man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the best. He's but, so, so yeah, he yeah, he was he, was he, he said, "Do you want to MC the vert thing?" So I did it with Wingy, mm -hmm. and it was Another brilliant. Legend, Wingy, yeah, mm -hmm. <sighs> Stephen, yeah, Wingnut, what an absolute legend. Um, so I did that, and then. From that, I suddenly started getting asked to MC all of these demos and mm -hmm. whatever else. And I was like, okay, this is quite a thing. Like, yeah, in the small season that was there. And then in the meantime, I was just trying to keep skateboarding, trying to get things back and trying to relearn things. And mm -hmm. it took a long time for the, my left foot to be able to feel my left foot. Yeah. Um, so I could do things, but you're regular, aren't you? Yeah. So it was my so, kickflip foot yeah. and everything. So all my <clears throat> flip tricks disappeared. It was mm. like, what is that down there? Like something's connected to the bottom of my leg. But Proper foot. It's, yeah, yeah, it was horrible. So in between MC and stuff, I was skating and I was making enough money to try, kind of get by. Mm. And then... Um, Still living in Southampton. Yeah, yeah. And then that just escalated on to going back to presenting stuff, really. And mm -hmm. like a few people were like, hey, do you want to do this? webcast like mystic cup and things like that where you're sitting yeah. there for three days for 94 hours a day and they just bring you trays of beer and burgers and they just sit you there all day and like i remember Pauli one year did ispo and we were all skating it was like a massive trade show in munich yeah. mm -hmm. and they had this amazing mini ramp every year by iou ramps and it would just be a, a piss up, come and get, get pissed. And Powley was on the mic and I remember they asked him, or was it Ben? I, they just said, can you can you swear more? And like they, as they hand you a tray of beers and then I started doing that and then I did that for about seven or eight years for Volcom and met all the guys from Volcom who yeah, then yeah. said, hey, can you come and do the La Cantera Pro webcast with yeah. Caswell Berry and all these different people? So I started branching off through these connections of MC in different mm -hmm. events off to different brands and different people who would then be like, can you come back and do it again? Can you do this? Can yeah. you do that? Um, and I think being a skateboard geek and caring about the names of tricks and caring about who people are and their sponsors mm. and knowing your shit. knowing history helped mm. with that because yeah. it would almost look like you had some sort of insight and it's like, no, I don't have an insight into who those people are. I just watched a lot of skate videos when I was a kid. Yeah, I just and, and, you know, down to what jeans they are and 
mm-hmm. where yeah. they got them from. What size wheelbase they've got. Yeah, I didn't really. I just knew what I liked. <laughs> but you're the specialist on that, aren't you? So uh, Apparently so. That's it's your, your kink, superpower. isn't it? Somebody was scared to ask me if they could borrow the, the wheelbase jig. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Is anyway, it a top so, secret wheelbase jig? Yeah. Shh. Can't talk about that. <clears throat> Um, so, yeah, I, so you've been emceeing for a long time now, aren't you? Yeah. You're kind of the go-to guy. So is that a full-time thing you're doing now? Is that, is that? Yeah, I'm pretty much full-time commentating. Yeah. For, I've just finished the World Skateboarding Tour for World Skate. So that was all of the events, street and park, running up to phase two of the Olympics, which mm. is Shanghai and Budapest. Um I and then I'm that whittles down everyone down to the Olympics. I think I'm coming to Budapest for one of the qualifying. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are you doing there? Dad's got some tickets or something. So nice. He said we're going to come out. Is it bad to ask you what your opinions are on the Olympics and skateboarding? No. Okay, what's your opinion on the Olympics and skateboarding, Mr Churchill? It's very direct, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that anything that can put skateboarding on the pedestal that it deserves to be at is good. Yep. But... M- Mainly that a whole new audience of people are going to discover skateboarding. <clears throat> and if they manage to go skateboarding, regardless of being an Olympian or whatever, if they mm-hmm. can discover skateboarding because of the Olympics and everything, and then skateboarding manages to save their life mm-hmm. or change their life as it has mine, mm-hmm. that's good, regardless of anything else. Yep. I don't care. Um I think what we're going to see now is new breeds of skateboarders that are competition skateboarders. Oh, you see it already, yeah. And there's going to be people getting into skateboarding to be an Olympic skateboarder. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But they will get into skateboarding. It doesn't work out. They're going to carry on skateboarding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, a discussion I had with Chris Pastras a few weeks ago in Dubai was we're now seeing people who only skate because they skate for olympics and they wouldn't skate outside of the olympic skateboarding thing yeah mm. so if they weren't an olympic skateboarder they wouldn't skate which yeah. is really weird to me because i can't stop skateboarding mm. yeah it would be really good for me if i did but i can't yeah so it'd be devastating for me actually if i did but stop but um do you know what i mean like I can't stop it. I can't stop <coughs> looking at skate spots. I can't stop thinking about skateboarding. You can't, t- can't turn your mind it's, off from yeah, it. Yeah, it's part of my genetics now. But there's a new breed of skateboarders that it's not like that. It's just about, well, what is the course looking like? What tricks can I do it's on It's almost like course? a work schedule. Yeah. And I mean, that when skateboarding becomes a job, it does change skateboarding. Or when you work yeah. within the skateboarding industry, mm-hmm. it changes skateboarding for you. So, um, there's different levels now and there's some people who are very good skateboarders. So Mm -hmm. like Niger Mm -hmm. will put out the most ridiculous street part and win this comp Yeah, and laugh about it. And I think that's incredible. You know, there are a few top end skateboarders who are making good money from their sponsors, good money from winning their, yeah, winnings at, these events, you know, and then, you know, SLS are putting up crazy amounts of money. This yeah. this season coming up is looking really good for that. Mm-hmm. And all these people on that circuit, they can make enough money to retire from skateboarding. Mm. Yeah. This thing that I started doing on the road and get shouted at, you know, outside the front of my house, these people are making life-changing amounts of money now. Mm. So I think SLS has got its, its spot of it brought these kind of new formats in and this whole thing of let's pay people properly. Let's get skateboarders Mm. what they deserve because like golf, you know, can you hit a ball this big into a hole this big? It's ridiculous with a stick. Skateboarding's on par with that, that I I see of, of difficulty. And and I think it, it it surpasses that Mm. in so many ways. Mm. Um, and it will get even harder. Um, And then with the Olympic side of what World Skate are doing on the way that they're doing the pre-qualifiers for the Olympics and setting the standard of how the Olympics will look, 
I think those two running alongside each other are pushing the level of what someone can do consistently. And I, that blows my mind because mm. it's not that long ago that a kickflip back lip was an ender in a video part. To me, I mean, it's it's getting old, but to me, that was a special thing that you wouldn't see. Now you're seeing someone do that as the first trick down a 15 stair handrail in a competition. On an Instagram run. story as well. Oh right. yeah, and then the Instagram stuff, people are like, oh, I'll put that on Instagram. I'm like, that that would be the best thing I've ever done. <clears throat> yeah. And they're, they're doing it as a mess around, you know? And yeah. I think the limelight, the what you get for it, it's not just an envelope from Chris Ince with 20 quid in and a voucher or, mm. you know, or something mm. like that. It's big ups, Chris Ince. Yeah, big up, Chris Ince, and the whole Ince family. Mm. Um, it's not just a mess around thing now. People are making careers out of it, yeah. so the the payoff is a lot higher. Mm. Good skateboarders are being shown in the right light. Yeah, and they they've got this opportunity, and I think the formats work well for people to be able to get something good done and be able, you know, the right people win. I think in in the right instances. Um, what what sort of money is SLS putting up for the next lot of comps then? What are we talking? Was it two fifty or something this year? Oh, okay. Maybe more, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But you know, they started off really high and they were paying people just to turn up. Yeah. And I think that was done so well. So, so well to yeah. be like, look at skateboarding, let's put it in a stadium and let's show everyone just how bonkers this mm -hmm. is and how you shouldn't be able to do these things, but you can and start making mm. famous skateboarders for being very good at what they do, yeah. not just being a flamboyant skateboarder, you know, Yeah. which has its place as well. But when you're, if you break it down and put statistics and things like that, which is now what we're starting to get mm. from world skate is this many wins, average finish of this average amount of points in this section and things like that it really shows you just how good certain people are at competition skating. Mm. But the best bit is, is a lot of those people are legit street skaters that are out there in the dirt yeah. every second they've got. And outside of the competition, they're still going out and getting handrail clips and yeah. ledge clips and stuff. <clears throat> and I think that's amazing. You know, the dirty, grotty, skating through piss on the landing of South Bank, like, it's still happening. Mm, yeah. at the same time as these other things. Yeah, yeah. And also what's amazing with with all of this is you'll have an SLS event going on at the Copper Box in London when they were coming over to London that I emceed before. Yeah. There'll still be people at South Bank that don't care. They're just doing their thing yeah, or at yeah. the little car yeah. park shredding. You don't have to like all of that stuff. And if you don't, don't like it. Don't watch it. Like, it's yeah. fine. Like, it's going to happen anyway, mm -hmm. but skateboarding is you and it's yours and everyone takes ownership of skateboarding. That's why everyone's so passionate about it yeah. because it's yours and it's, yeah. and it's here mm. and to get to a certain level of skateboarding or to hit a level that you're happy with, that passion has to run through it and then you will be passionate about it and yeah. be protective of it. And mm. everyone wants to protect it, which is amazing. And they can go and skate a little on the waxed up curb and shred with the Olympics going on in Paris two blocks away and be like, yeah, whatever, I'm, I'm doing my thing. Yeah. yeah, I think it just kind of adds another string to its bow, you know, the Olympics. It's like, it's not for everyone. But like like you said earlier, it raises awareness and then somebody might pick up a skateboard for the first time because of that and stick to it. And then, like you say, it changes their life and, yeah. you know, they get to do all the ridiculous stuff that comes with skating. But then you see, like, there's these new competition skaters. I mean, they're starting to get old now, which is bonkers, yeah. like Uto and people like that, who came out and went, well, I'm going to do all the stuff that you thought was, well, you, nobody even thought about. Yeah. Like, who's doing Nolly 270, like, no slides? Yeah. That's literally the trick that was in my mind. I watched it. All of that stuff. I watched them, I watched it recently. Um, I don't know what it was, but it was literally just like best tricks on a down rail with a with a roll out platform, and I think he does it. He does it there, and he does want to like. Does he do something to Smith as well? I can't remember. But he's fucking insane. But yeah, but, I mean those. You know, there might be someone who starts skateboarding because they see it on the on the pedestal yeah. of the Olympics, and then they start doing tricks that 
have never been done. Well, that's combinations the, yeah. of things. Yeah. And if that person didn't, would that trick ever happen? Probably, but but not as soon as that person did it. Or it's like a weird destiny thing that someone might see it and resonate with it, like we did when we started skating. And yeah. you know, it's like, well, I'm meant to do this, and then it progresses into something else. And I wonder. I think that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wonder what level tricks are going to be out in 20 years from now in in contests and i mean it... I, I literally i'm sat there with a headset on watching the screen are you getting I'll... the live feed from one camera or do you get all the cameras when you're so we've got sometimes we'll be sat in the crowd yeah. in our own little section or in a booth <coughs> overlooking sometimes we're out the back hmm. depending on what the production budget is or what yeah. where they need us um usually where the outside broadcast truck is so that we're near to them to run the cables and stuff yeah but um we'll talk about what's on the screen so that everyone at home that's watching gotcha. isn't going yeah. what are they talking about yeah, i can't yeah, yeah. see that which is frustrating so i'll be calling out a combination of tricks and i afterwards i go what what yeah i can't believe i'm saying this 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 or in a run section saying they've just done this they've done this done this done this and afterwards mm. it's like and any one what of those tricks would have been a fuck just happened. Yeah, any yeah. one of those tricks would have been a last like after Black Hammer. Yeah, and they've done it all in in or a like line. Something that maybe someone did that you heard about but never saw. Yeah, you know, or like oh, Tom Penny did that like over that on that, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. but probably it's Tom. So hmm. stuff like that. But you're seeing it there live, and that is amazing. I've got the best job for me ever in the world and I appreciate every second that I get to do it because I'm looking at something I love and talking about it and being completely in Still love with it. Still learning more about it as well. Yeah, and then just being like, well, what on earth? Like, Surely Yuto's the first <coughs> person that we've all seen to do like the Nolly 270 to noses and so stuff what, like that. That's backside Nolly 270 to back nose, isn't it? Mm. And it's then does the 270 it. out, which is the U Tornado. Yeah. yeah. That's been named now. And you know what? You know what else stokes me about that? So he's there on those comp series with all those skateboards around him smashing it. And then he goes to his local park and skates with all mm. of his mates that aren't bothered about the Olympics. Yeah. Same with that um who's the girl on is it Primitive that had the Thrasher cover? Yeah. Eli Elisa, some I forgot what her name is, from Brazil. Right, yeah. And she just had an out there and she's like in America with all the dudes that you look up to and then she's at a local park with all the kids. Mm. Skating like, with training, a lot of yeah. skating, it's just like, because yeah. you can do it anywhere, it's like you're not, you know, like a footballer will play a match and then you won't ever see a football star at your local pitch. Mm. Yeah. But you can go to a local park on a random day and be like, that's just how good skating hell, they're, is, they're just it? passing through yeah. and then you skate with them. I always think that you won't see a tennis player at Wimbledon just go to a local court <clears> and <throat> have a, like, have a little tennis with, mm. with the kids, but well, skateboarding. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go and down the local park and practice javelin or... Yeah. Like, you know, you don't see someone go, well, I'm going to go to so-and-so park and do my shop put or whatever. Like, skateboarding is so accessible because yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah. You mm. can do it everywhere. On like, that I mean, note, do you think we might end up at some point with, like, <clears throat> like Olympic training grounds purely for... Like, you, where you get football stadiums, you think you'll get, like, a Team GB... Well, I might, think, I think like there is stadium. already some in like Japan and stuff, like yeah, dedicated so, villages for yeah, it. Yeah, and then you might see less of that, like the Olympians going and skating well, you're in the seeing it. You're seeing like centres of excellence for skateboarding. Like yeah. the Netherlands are really good with it. They've got yeah. that Den Haag place. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's there's loads of different places that you see the California Skate Park's training facility for mm -hmm. the park side of things and mm -hmm. a bit of street stuff. Um, I think Team GB are going to do something like that. And I mean... It needs to happen, mm. but it shouldn't be exclusive. It shouldn't just be, this is for only for TGB people. We don't have enough facilities here in the UK. Mm -hmm. We don't have good enough stuff. But I feel like that's what's bred or filtered through a lot of the best skateboarders that have in the world. Yeah. Because they've had to they've got that go through how shit the UK is to skate to get it. to a point. And then because mm -hmm. they've worked so hard... You know, Jeff goes over to the States and 360 flips that uni set mm. of stairs and Tom just starts doing whatever. It's easy because it's smooth and it's nice to fall on and whatever. Well, it's never easy. But, you know, I think because everyone in the UK has had to work and 
you know, mm-hmm. you're rolling up to a handrail and you're like, well, this could be the time that that bit of tarmac flicks out and I stop yeah. dead and slide down on my teeth. Like, it's never the same. Um, but I feel like as as things progress more and funding gets released, then, yeah, we might have a South one, a Midlands one, uh, you know, North and then a Scottish one and, and things like mm. that. There should be because... It's legit. It's it's happening. You know, yeah. this is going to be the second time skateboarding is going to be in the Olymp- in Olympics. The second time everyone's going to have this visual like injection into their eyes because I remember when last time I did the BBC commentary, it like my whole phone went mental from regular people that didn't skate. All these people I used to know getting hold of me, going, "Oh my god!" Like skateboarding's come on so much or people I used to skate with they're like that was unbelievable I never thought anyone would be doing those kind of tricks mm. let alone the women's and stuff like that and I'm mm. like this has gone a long way yeah and, I, and it's reaching audiences that that can't be reached before but with the likes of Sky skating for Team GB and stuff it's mm. only going to push it further and further so that we do get those facilities so that Little Timmy, who could be the big big next name, has got a chance to become yeah. the big next name because mm. skating on his old mini ramp that's fallen to pieces in the back of a park, hidden away out of the corner, surrounded by people smoking weed and doing no good and intimidating him isn't really giving him the easiest chance to get no. to where he needs to go. So, yeah. you know, I think the evolution of things will be, you know, mm-hmm. how many people do you see other than the two weeks over three weeks over Wimbledon using tennis courts. Hmm. You yeah. don't really see that many people, but you see a skate park, every time you go past it, it might be full of scooters or BMX or mountain bikers, radio controlled car people or skateboarders. Hmm. There's people on it. It's one of the most yeah. overused and under funded facilities within the UK. And that yeah. needs to change. 100%. I also feel we're like 20 years behind the rest of the world yeah. really with skate parks sure. and stuff. You know, we really need to... <clears throat> pull our socks up and get but some the, good parks and the problem is, is you've got loads of little councils these little town councils <clears throat> they won't speak to each other and build one good skate park they'll yeah. say well we want a 50k skate park here that money doesn't go very far at all anymore nah. so everyone needs to start speaking pull their money and do these bigger free facilities mm. and then when the funding's available through the likes of Samsung getting involved with Skateboard mm, GB mm. and things like that and partnering, those funds become more widely available and then they can build these centres of excellence. But they should be used for everyone, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Tell yeah, you what's mate. a fucking centre of excellence if I've ever seen one is the Folkestone Park. When it, like I did an event there, hosted an event for GB two weeks ago. And when I walked in, I was like, Fuck it. It's the first time I've seen a skate park indoors on three floors. Yeah. Let's put it that way. It's bonkers, isn't it? And it was, just, been, but... it was just insane. Like the top two, the second and third floors wood. So like one's a bowl rhythm and then one's a street. But then the first floor is all concrete and you've got a proper pool there with all pool coping. Hmm. And I was looking at it thinking if this doesn't breed a generation of skateboarders, if that's your local hmm. park and that's the local pool you want to skate... You can see where you've got you the pre- likes of Tay Cunningham who, who skates there. Oh, he's who's nuts. Becoming phenomenal at vert skateboarding and pool mm. skateboarding. Kids like him like can just throw out five forties now, like it's mm. like you're doing a rock, rock and roll on a mini ramp. But that goes back to like with the commentating. You on the park side of stuff. A five forty used to be this mythical, ridiculous trick, but people are dropping into them and it's like a setup trick, doing yeah, them back to back. You know, and and varial ones, kickflip ones, <clears> and stuff, <throat> and. You know, even stale fish and indie ones are regular ones. Like, it used to just be a Mute or a Melon 5. Mm. Like, that would be it, you know. But there's also other people doing, like, paying attention and changing stuff up and doing proper McTwists where they're upside down and grabbing Mute. And it's... What's good is everyone's trying to be, to the judges, identified as different to the last person who's dropped in. Mm. So you're seeing all the old school nuances of people doing sad plants instead of just mm-hmm. doing a, a tuck knee invert or something like there's people doing all this different stuff and it's, it's re-releasing a lot of things. And there's a lot of people who do like a front side hand turn and then you've got people who do proper front side inverts and you're like, there's two very different things. 
and then you see how well they're scored by the yeah. judges who know what they're looking at and it's it's bringing this new sort of push on people doing tricks really well because back I remember Execution. watching the videos style matters watch isn't it watch Neil Blender do an invert and mm. watch Grosso do an invert and then you'd watch some of the other people do an invert you'd be like they're not the same mm -hmm. but they were consistent at doing a fully yeah. extended sad plant like yeah. proper not a little poke or anything like luck in the thing. arm and then in and I don't know I'm lucky to have grown up in that era and seen all of that happening and then go to South Sea Skate Park and see the Brooks and Gary Lee and Sue Hazel and um, all of those skaters in real life and just watch them and, and be like, wow. And they were really intimidating. The Brooks were really intimidating. Like, they're like mm. crazy pirates. Are they still and skating? I think one of them came to Greg's ramp a little oh. while ago and maybe skated a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think they were running wine companies or something or something like that in the States or yeah. I don't know. Don't really know that for sure. But yeah, they're around skateboarding still. So we should probably let the listeners know about the Patreon that we're starting. Do you want to give them some information about that? Yes, I will. So from as little as two pounds a month, you can become a Patreon member and get access to uncensored, uncut episodes, mm -hmm. behind the scenes shiz, bonus OG episodes. What does that mean, Ford? Like the episodes that we used to see where it was just me and Toby doing reviews, fan mail, and anything else in between. And Toby's favorite, Stinker of the Week. Stinker of the Week is back, but only on Patreon episodes. Mm -hmm. You will also get outtakes, early access to new merch when it launches, mm -hmm. general skate nerdery, and much, 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 much more. <laughs> Make sure you check out all the information in the description, follow the links, make sure you subscribe, become a member, and enjoy the rest of the episode. It's a nice setup Greg's got, isn't it? Amazing, I haven't been yeah. there, Gregtopia. Yeah. Yeah. Gregtopia. What was that? What was that? Sounds like a motorbike. Mm. The toilet back onto there. <laughs> <laughs> we need to uh, do a day out at Greg's. But yeah. Well, I, don't know, I don't know Greg, so it would be a bit out of place just to be like... Well, we should coming, talk about Greg. He keeps really. coming up on episodes. I want episodes. to get him on here. Because you he should. keeps coming up on episodes. He Greg's doesn't... insights into addiction, into uh, slamming. Yeah. yeah. Possibly known more for slamming than how good he is at skateboarding. Because Greg was like a mythical person from Southampton. Never saw him. Like I heard that he'd done these things around Southampton. And then I was like, well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to yeah. do that. And um, you'd see Don around and all the older guys, and I'd skate mini ramp with them a little bit every, day, every now and then. Um, but wouldn't see Greg. And then when I started hanging out with Greg, it was like, whoa, this is so much more. He skates the exact same as like, what I've always seen, like the quickness, the energy, flip in, flip out. Yeah. The the crazy style because he's tall as well. Yeah. So he's tall, and I guess it's like that Ben Schroeder kind of slam thing I'm, I'm tall i'm gonna slam you're gonna know about it yeah. what, what do you mean it's so much more than skateboarding with greg there's a lot as i got to know greg there's a lot more going on yeah. with greg and it comes out in everything he does right. whether it be writing something down and you're like that's not words yeah like <laughs> to his signature of like Bleh! to like how he drives everything it's all done the same as as he skates and it's terrifying. Flip in, flip out. Of, in Fast. A car. I mean, he's... Yeah. I mean, get him on. He'll tell you about it. But he's more than a hero to me because I've I've known him at his worst. I've known him at his best. He's not been drinking for a very long time. I knew him as his drinking was taking off mm. and as he'd come back to skateboarding because Greg Nowick in the 80s, 90s, and then late 90s through 2000s are two different people right um and he's a, he's another different person now and he's such an amazing person and has helped me with a lot of mental health things mm. and kind of almost like a counselor to me because of what he's gone through with his alcoholism and everything that he's been through himself and and we would go to cater him on a on a tuesday night um and we just, it would almost be like a counseling session because <clears throat> he's gone through a lot. And once you see or know what he's gone through, it, you can see it in his skateboarding. And that's what I like is 
that urgency that I need to get to the other side and do a trick as quickly as possible. And I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do a lean melon. I'm going to do a lean melon that's so high that when I land, my board's going to break. Mm. You know, I've, I've not really seen people snap boards on ramps, landing tricks, you know, because he, he just would do stuff. that he, he was like maybe the first introduction to pro level skateboarding that I've ever seen and mm. how he wasn't pro at that point. I mm. don't know. I mean, he did he have a board on panic? I've never seen a board aside so. from white trash with yeah. Greg. But yeah, he, he deserves. He was, yeah, he way deserves. more than he's ever got. And especially now he's like, because back in the day, I mean, to tell a funny story, I mean, he'll, it's funny, you tell Greg a story about what he was doing when he was drunk and he'd be like, God, I wish I could remember that. That would have been amazing. Because <laughs> he was a full-blown alcoholic or it still is a full-blown alcoholic. Yeah. But we were at... Uh, Crystal Palace for a comp. Do you remember that thing? Did you go to that? I never went to it, but... So there was a guy called Oscar Laguna from Spain yeah. who skated a bit weird and people weren't happy with how he was and yeah. he had a bit of a bad attitude. Yeah. He was trying to walk along this big, long platform. He was trying to ride along and then ollie off over the barrier to the flat, which was like maybe 12 foot or something mm -hmm. like that. It was a big deal. And he's trying to do it. Greg took distaste to it. He'd already drank a carrier bag full of spirits and beers and stuff. So he just got his knob out and pissed all over the platform on his run up <laughs> in front of a huge crowd of people. <clears throat> just didn't care. Then the security tried to get him. He fell over going down one of the ramps. Or No, he dropped in on this huge flat bank. <clears throat> and he's rolling along and he's holding these bags of beers and stuff. And everyone's like, whoa. <laughs> as he's leaning forward you know that thing when you skate and you're yeah. drunk and you're like oh the floor's there bang and he did that and fell over and then the security bundled him I remember Rodney Clark grabbing one of the security guards my brother was trying to bite one of them or something like that and <laughs> it it was crazy and he just didn't give a fuck he's just like yeah I'm just wasted and just mm. gonna do whatever I wanted and it was pretty hectic but yeah he would drink nine beers and skate the mini ramp and sweat 12 beers out of him somehow mm. yeah get a full gersh on and then <laughs> would do some of the best stuff that would mm. happen that day and he would be pissed out of his head it was yeah like a marvel really but nowadays you see him skating he's still like i'm gonna take the slam to get the trick and yeah at a certain point at, or a certain age i'd say probably you get to the point where you're not willing to take the slam to do the trick mm. And that's where you start slowing down, maybe, or you you lose tricks. Mm -hmm. Whereas Greg's, Greg's still learning tricks now, and he's yeah. 50. So, Did he build the vert ramp in his garden just because he wanted to learn to skate vert or something? That's what I read or heard, maybe. Well, he he's got a had ramp, room he? and built that vert ramp with Trev, yeah. the skate park architect. And he was going to skate room all the time mm -hmm. and just was like, well, why don't I build this ramp? So yeah. he built it. Um, I don't know if it was, I'm sure it was in his head, I'm going to get really good at that. But if he bought a launch ramp or a flat bank and whatever, he would get really good at it. Really good at it. Whatever he does, he will get really good at it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. And I mean, he didn't build a little vert ramp. It's huge. It's petrifying. Yeah. It's it's scary to rock fake it. It's really gnarly. He'll be like, whatever. But yeah. And then he just invites everyone over. He's got a really sick mini ramp. And they've just resurfaced that with skate light as well. That's yeah. probably where I'll stick to. Yeah. I, if I we tend ever to go. spend a bit of time there. But Maybe you could drop him a message for us and tell him yeah. that we're interested in him coming on the show. Do and it. He'll film yeah, like 50 him. hours worth of footage in 10 minutes on that mini ramp. With ease. Yeah. He'll do some stuff he'd never seen. Yeah. Uh, He's got really speed. quick feet, hasn't he? Oh man, yeah. Like somewhere man. else. See, he used to do the, the pivot rock willy. Yeah. And he used to really quick. And Still like, does him. Yeah. And you'd be like, well, I remember first seeing him do that. But like, what, what, what? He like slapping his nose as well, didn't he? Yeah. Making some noise I remember bit. once I said, how, how, how come you hit your tail loads on like tail slaps on airs and stuff like that? And he's like, because I know I won't hang up if I hit my tail. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. Makes sense though, doesn't it? Yeah. But he can choose to do yeah. that. I would throw myself in the air and be like, I might land on the ramp, might yeah. hang up, whatever. I couldn't choose if I was going to hit my tail. I'm not yeah. that skilled. He, oh, he'd had enough time so to whack, you know. 
Mm. Like you see a lot of good skateboarding, but is there anyone specifically that sits on your mind like fucking hell that day he was on fire that day or just consistency uh, yeah. of something or like, I mean, like who's, who's on that radar? Like you've got the Nigers and yeah. Felipe Gustavos and, and people who, when they're having the day, it's just consistency. It's, it's bonkers. It's unreal. Like, we isn't it? went to Japan, I flew in that day, dropped my bags off in the hotel and went into the event. Nigel just got off the plane and turned up as well, had his bags or, yeah, I think he had his bags with him and everything. He skated for 15 minutes and did the line that he did in his final 15 minutes later. It's unreal consistency, it is isn't it? bonkers. Yeah. It is so unobtainably mental to me to see that. But I guess if you go skateboarding every day and you can, then at some point you hit you... this level where you're like that, but that's beyond all the other guys. Yeah, but bringing it back like UK based, I remember one year, Chris Vile, a UK champs. Oh man, Chris Vile is still very so good. Ridiculously amazing. Yeah. And I remember going, I'm I'm watching a moment here, and yeah. I was on the mic and just every time because that would it would be a jam session. Every time I turned round, Chris landed a trick, and I don't think he fell off the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. But he was doing stuff down the handrail, down the hover, and flips in, like mm. all stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, like this yeah. is special. That really blew me away. Like, I think Chris always needed more recognition than he got. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Don't know why he didn't, but yeah. But on the other level of that is how do you MC Felix? Mm. Like, I don't know what that trick is. It's a Felix. Mm. Look, there's the Felix spin and the Felix like sweepers. Like, yeah. And yeah. like on that level, it's exciting and it's amazing to, mm. to watch. And it's amazing to be on the mic with as well. <clears throat> like there's really good, amazing, consistent skateboarding at a very high level. Then there's people that, you know, who are having like an amazing day and that's really good to be lucky to MC mm. that. Then there's someone like Felix or mm -hmm. there's someone who's learned to drop in for the first time. Mm. And I mean, that's the universal bond we've all got. Mm -hmm. First Ollie, first drop in or something like that. And you know what you have to go through to drop in. And yeah. if you're, if I'm doing like an MC in a, a little local jam or something like that, which I still like to do because that's where I've come from, um, getting hyped about someone dropping in is real that hype is real mm -hmm. like because it's you know what it's taken it's it's a special moment that yeah, someone yeah. will never forget and hopefully by whatever i'm saying on the mic is is going to make it even you know less forgettable um <clears throat> i spoke to dick fingers yesterday oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> i said you were coming on and i asked him if he had any questions and he said uh, i know what he said ask him if he's got any good nas stories Oh, okay, that's all right. That's quite. Tight. What did you expect? What did to you say? think? Him? I'm not going to say it because then you'll ask me about. There it. was another thing, but I didn't put that in there. Okay. Something about somebody shitting on the street course. Oh, Stu, Stu Graham. Yeah. That was at Nas. That was great. But like everyone knows, that it was him. I don't know what he's talking about. Let's Silly go into. Sorry, Nas stories. Got any good ones? Got any good Nas stories? Nas stories. Uh... <laughs> What's your I most? I think mo most of the stories I forget because I was drunk. Right. But I remember I woke up one morning and I felt awful and they had the Goliath ramp. Yeah. Because they couldn't call it a mega ramp because that's mm. painted or whatever. So they had the, the, oh, no the Goliath ramp. They weren't allowed to call it a mega. But uh, was. We all woke up. There's like a load of Welsh. There's Beefy, Dane and I don't think Pritch was there. A load of other people. All of us lot and other people around and it we, we woke up you know you wake unzip the thing and you're just like oh my god i feel so bad and it was the first time i was emceeing the goliath there so i don't know if it was my first emceeing job there actually not sure no i think i'd done the street course before but um my friend was like oh do you want a baraka it's a beefy you gotta follow him on, on instagram He's amazing. Um, he gave me this Barocca, but he'd made Barocca and gin. 
<laughs> like classic <laughs> hair of the dog. Oh my god, we had the best day after that. It was it was brilliant. It was like I'm not advocating drinking on a hangover, but but that works. It was brilliant, Barocca and gin. <laughs> Brocker and Jerry. <clears throat> but yeah, that was that that was great. Andy Scott did like a backside three sixty kick that melon, I think, over mm. the gap and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it was phenomenal. Um but yeah, Stu Graham taking a shit on the street course is like a <laughs> What was that what built up to him doing that? I can't really I remember. Think he, I, I wasn't there that year. There was a load of Americans. I think that was the year that World Cup of skateboarding brought some people through right. with Dave Duncan. Sasha Steinhorst mm. running the comp, um, RIP Sasha. Uh, and I think Stu just took a distaste to the Americanism of the competition. They were all scoring really well. Other people who were skating arguably better weren't. And it was all like their the panel of judges that came in as the well. The best way to resolve this is to take a shit in public. I in remember he, he said, when they call my name... I'm going to take a shit on the course. And we're all like <laughs> drinking beers, like whatever. Yeah. In like a passing comment, like, a, like, you know, just sat chatting and they called his name and he skated over to the, this Euro gap and they had like <clears> a, <throat> sorry, not a Euro gap. It's a Wembley gap. Uh, mm. And they had like this thing with some fake plants and some fake grass <laughs> on. And he literally just pulled down his trousers and took a shit, but it was like a NAS shit. So it wasn't like a What's the nice consistency one. of a NAS shit? I'd say it was more like, I'd say, yeah, it's got to be on par with like the innards of a shepherd's pie. Okay. Chili con carne, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that paints a picture. Yeah. Loose. Um, and they have to clean it it's up. It's a, well. loose, a stool. loose, yeah. loose stool. <laughs> wet. <laughs> it's very wet. <clears throat> so, yeah, he did that. And there was people skating, jumping off their boards, ollieing up, going, oh, like this. And like the American guys were all kicking off. And, they loved and it, it. Was, <laughs> it was horrible. And they had this cleaning team come in, and everyone's like, Wah! going nuts and yeah, yeah it was it was a very disgusting moment that was hilarious a and it dirty was so protest british was he banned yeah, from like, us for that he was banned until i think he <coughs> came back and that's when he smashed his head open you see all the stuff in the backside yeah, disaster back, to backside boneless on the ball ride was thing. it back boneless is it back boneless or back i thought disaster? he did backside disaster to fake he came down and whipped his head backside for... disaster oh no he came it. back and did a backside boneless you can't do a backside with the disaster to fakey it you know, what, you, you know what I mean, so just get over it. Fucking kids. It's like a rock fake. Toby still detail. says front side indie, so. No, fuck off, I like, don't. Get off your heart. What an horse. insult. But anyway, yeah. So, so he was banned until. Yeah, and then, then he got pissed and kicked off and threw stuff at people, and then they were trying to kick him out, and then I got him back in, and. Yeah. Where yeah, is he now? Is he in California? Where is he now? Is California. He... Is he still over there? No, he's in Scotland. I thought he'd, yeah, because... No, I'm, I messaged him to come on the show and he said he would, but he's moving out to America. Oh, is he moving back? Or he's Amazing. in America or... Because his, his family came over yeah. when he got deported. Mm. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm sure I messaged him to get in on, to come on the show. And he said he would, but he's not going to be in the country. I'd like to get him oh, on. Oh, that would be a great one. Yeah. Uh, you got any good Don Brider stories? Uh, the Don's, the Don's the father. Dons. The Don's um, father, yeah. There's, there's loads. Right, loads. Give, give us your, I don't know give what, your top, top three like best the, Don stories. That Greg stopped BMXing and started skateboarding because he was in a schoolyard mm-hmm. and looked around and saw Don do a wall ride on the way through the school. Right. And he was just like, what, between lessons or something? No, I think it was like a weekend or something. Right. And he was like, whoa. The Don's. So this mind. guy did a wall ride on a wall and then carried on skating. Like, just left and it that, behind. And that's that's a good story. That's really good. There's a... Inspiration. Allegedly, Don did the first frontside Smith grind in the UK on a vert ramp. Right. I heard that. Allegedly. With a massive fringe you, on him. Yeah, he'd have had the McSqueed. I love how big his fringe was. Amazing. Oh, yeah. There's... Yeah, I mean, he was like a mythical person, but then you'd go in offbeat and he'd be sat in the corner like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, oh, I love how grumpy this guy is. I don't but think I I've ever met him. What he did and kind of his history, I knew that he used to win like smell of death skate uh, comps and yeah. stuff. And 
he was quite a pioneer at the time of skateboarding and did stuff that no one else did. But it was, you know, he's a mega skateboarding geek and, and yeah. you know, he got a roller skate, a two by four and made yeah, a skateboard. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he's OG, you know. Oh yeah. He built a ramp in his back garden and then skated it and his next door neighbour had a heart attack, which is pretty gnarly. Because of him skating? I think so. What? But uh, all, there's all sorts of like really cool. God, I'm little, laughing, but I'm crying inside. Like there's yeah. all these cool little things. Like and he, he would he had a, a little ramp, and Greg would go and take it, just a little launch ramp, and take yeah. it to the local park and skate it. And Greg hmm. would be like this, hanging around kid, like Don, Don, Don. That makes me laugh. Was he ever on Deathbox, Don? I know he he fucking he loved was it. On all of that stuff, did he get experimental boards? But I'm not sure, it's but a little bit before which is time. making a resurgence, isn't it? I've seen a few people with experimental boards. I saw somebody skating at the church in Caterham. Right. What, with, with one of those? With one of those. Nice. But on Instagram, not right. physically. I don't go anywhere physically anymore. <laughs> I just sit at home looking on Instagram. Stands in his garden. <laughs> just there. Um, swipe, swipe. But he was part <clears> of <throat> that whole Jeremy Deacon yeah. sort of, Crew. Part. Yeah. I think he's still got the, the teapot screens at home. Mm -hmm. Um but he's got you know, he's still screen printing. Yeah. He'll still do it cheaper than anyone else yeah. and better yeah. quality. I always get um, stickers from him. He's relentless, hard working yeah. um person and you know, he's cared for both of his parents and carried on skateboarding all the way through. Mm -hmm. But then what was it just before COVID, we were at the skate park. I turned up late. And he'd already been taken off to hospital, but he fell over and basically shattered his hip. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen the x-rays and went and saw him in hospital and it was in a bad, bad way, really yeah. bad way. He had like a full set of Meccano put inside his hip. But what, what was he doing when it happened? Rolling along the flat. Fuck's sake. And fell over. Yeah. It's like you pushing up yeah. the bank and tearing your calf, isn't it? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's... that's like Ronnie did when he slipped over and <clears throat> broke his femur. He was walking up the bank at Devo, wasn't he? Slipped over and was well, it slipped from a wet bank to a yeah, dry and bit then, and then it spiral fractured? Oh, from there, oh, fucking hell, that's what I'm gonna do one day. Something stupid. Well, you were walking up taking the, stairs, the bins weren't out, you were walking up the stairs and broke my finger, broke your finger and... just walking up the stairs. But I claimed that he put it up his bum and it got stuck. I was just gonna say, just walking up the stairs, eh? Yeah, put it up his put it up his bum and jumped on it and it snapped, <laughs> sat on it. <laughs> Who um? Fuck's sake. Who's Milky? Who's Milky? Who's Milky? milky, milky. Has Joe Habgood asked you about Milky. Not Habgood. Someone else has asked you about Milky. Who is Milky? But so, yeah, who is the legend of Milky? I've just sold a property that I bought twenty years ago. It was in an all right place, and then within eight months of buying it, it turned into a really bad area. Um. Milky is a milk-coloured baseball bat, rounders bat, that okay. my mum gave me when she left, mm -hmm. or left behind when she left when I was a kid. And Milky stayed with me forever. And Milky is a deterrent for unlikable people. A gentle persuader. It's, yeah. What a persuader. nice way to put it. A gentle so, persuader. Like where I was living for a long time, turned into a really, really dangerous, horrible place. How did it turn into that so quickly? <clears throat> they knocked out or, or built on this huge park that was behind this Victorian terrace, knocked out a load of houses mm. and built a huge estate and filled it full of all the worst people from around the world. And unfortunately, I lived in this place, didn't make any money, struggling to, to stay there. Then when I came to try and sell it, the lease years had run out too low, so I couldn't sell it. So then I had to sell up, save up all my money to be able to get a new lease. Mm -hmm. And I've only just sold it about yeah. three weeks ago. So, so which when... is a massive relief. <laughs> but Milky is a bat about that big that looked after the, the property and would sit by the door and let did, people know that he was there. Did you have to use it? No. I would threaten threaten people with it. Yeah. I nearly hit with someone with it before. It was, was it people trying to break thing. into your house? Or? Yeah, breaking in, screaming, shouting at 
five a.m. on a Sunday when you got to drive for five hours the next morning at six, yeah, you know, and that. stuff like mm. that. Um, people injecting, like people would kick our door in and then take drugs and shit and piss all over the whole way and stuff like that. And yeah. Problem was, is the maintenance. When someone did that, the bills would come to the people who owned the flats, and there was only four flats and a shop out the front. So, if someone did something and damaged something, we would directly have to pay for it. It yeah. wasn't like hundreds of flats paying a fiver for it to be fixed. It would be like, here's your two hundred and fifty pound bill, and I'm like, I made a hundred and seventy pounds this month. Mm-hmm. So, it would it was it got to a point where I was in a bad place, and there was this huge Polish guy that had moved in and he was notorious. He would just come and empty the bins into the road, throw the bins around. And mm-hmm. he was a horrible, horrible person. And I put up with it for ages. And then one day I ran out in my boxer shorts and a vest with Milky and he just went and I swung it. And it was, I just watched it go by the back of his head about that far away. And I went, Oh my God, I've made a massive mistake. And then, but luckily I never hit anyone with it. Cause that would have been prison. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. it got, it used to be, I'd hold it and be like, you guys need to move on because it would be 20 people yeah. stood going mental and it would be two litre bottles of labelless vodka yeah. and bags of cocaine just on the wall outside the front of my flat from eight o'clock till eight, you know, eight at night till eight in the morning. Yeah. And then the others would come off shift They'd go and sleep in their beds whilst they went to work. They'd come back from work and then they'd party. So it was like this constant cycle. Yeah, fuck mm-hmm. that. And you couldn't get anything done, couldn't sleep. So it would be like, guys, I've asked you like six or seven times. The police weren't doing anything about it. They did, didn't even come into the area. So you had to sort it out yourself. Yeah. So, but luckily I didn't ever need to use it. Mm-hmm. But Milky's, yeah. My Who asked mate. you about that? Dane. Dane? Dainton. Oh, Dane, yeah. He loves milk. Yeah. Which which <laughs> brings me on to <clears throat> just a quick one. What exactly was the Punch and Eagle in flight tour? So I can remember watching that as it came out through Daint's YouTube. You, Jake Collins, yeah, me, Dainton. Jake, Daint, Jerome. Was, uh, it, was it for anyone or for anything? Or was it just like <laughs> Dainton's like, I've got this idea. So myself, Mark Munson, Carl Wilson, Potter, yeah. Jerome, well, I remember one year I was at Urban Games and Munson, I'd never met him before. And it was when I did the wall ride on the Sprite thing. Mm. And he shouted at me and I didn't do it. I was doing it onto the bank and I never knew this guy, just this mm. Essex bear yeah. shouting at me. I don't think he had a top on or something. I was like, oh my God, this guy's going to kill me. He's like, go into the other fucking transition, you wanker. And I'm like, oh my God. And I did. And I went from. <laughs> quarter pipe to quarter pipe on this wall ride <laughs> and then he said we're going to america to go to all the best big concrete parks come with us and i was like i can't afford that i can't years go by i end up becoming friends with him and carl and, mm. and lee and everyone from essex and spending a lot of time with them and then going to the states so we mm. would go to the, the pacific northwest either mm. go into seattle or and go down and up and down or go over from anacort is to uh orcas island and whatever, or flying to SF, go and see the guys at Deluxe and Santa Cruz and then go back up and, mm-hmm. and whatever. So we would do that. And we did that for years. It was like a thing that we would do every year. It was amazing. Some of the best memories I've got skateboarding, doing that and being in the car and just singing and messing around. Um, then we didn't do it for a while, a long time. And then we just decided to do another one. Yeah. And... Greg came on one and I filmed a few things and gave it to Evans and then they made like a Vans edit out of it. Mm-hmm. And then we just, Dayton said he was up for coming and he was like, we're going to make a, a video out of it. And it was just, yeah. it just fell into place. Mm. It was such a good and video it just, series. It was, yeah, it was really good because yeah. it was raw and, and it yeah. was as things were happening, he was doing it and putting it up and it was just a, a, a little road trip around that was well good fun. Yeah. It was really good fun. I just YouTube. remember the intro was like, bunch of you going flat tour. So that's Alex who does Boyo. <clears throat> Alex is like a comedy genius. He did yeah. the voiceovers for um, for the milk 
So search the milk out and there's like Ross Kemp on gangs and oh yeah, all these stuff like that. That's him and him and Dainton together. Dainton's editing and filming and his voiceovers and stuff like the, the rejig of thrashing that they did and stuff like that. It's just, oh, I remember that oh, thrashing it's advert. It's so good. Where they're like going down the hill and he's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Turning in, turning yeah. out. <laughs> that was so sick. good. So Alex does all those bits. And oh, they he are did online. that intro. He did that yeah, intro. They're, they're all on Dayton's page still. All on Dayton. I know what I'm watching later. Little Jake Collins. God, and Jake's I, always been so good. Jake, has Jake got a ball down 40 now? Oh, no, on SEUK, isn't he? No, Jake Anderson has. No, Jake. Jake Anderson. Getting Cornish confused. legend, right, Jake. Yeah. He's very good at skateboarding on a van. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was good to... Because I don't know what, what happened for some some reason at some point during my life. I guess because I went to Cardiff on a Vans tour mm-hmm. and Jerome worked in the skate park there, <coughs> which was round the corner from where Spit and Sawdust is now. So, yeah, Jerome worked there. And then Jerome ended up working at Shiner. Mm-hmm. And spent a lot of time with Jerome doing things and we became good friends. And then through that, Jerome was living with Grimm. So I'd end up staying at yeah. their house Big and hanging Grimm. out and going to the pub. And Is that when they had the mini ramp out of the back? Yeah, but it was fucked mm. when I went there. But, um, and just became friends with all the, the Welsh lot and just had the best yeah. time of going skating with all Fucking of them. Fucking heavy and, skateboarders. Yeah, and just everybody being passionate and going skating and yeah. then partying in the evening. And yeah. it was like the perfect combination. I was like, this is what Southampton's me- missing. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause it's a heavy it was scene. Like they were going and doing it and everything was walkable from Grimm's. So we would go and do stuff. And I remember being like, Grimm is bonkers and amazing. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. He's like one of my favorite people cause he's bouncing all over the place. Like I kind of am sometimes I'm like, yeah, oh my God, and you can't finish your sentence and you're moving on to something else. And it's the ADHD. Yeah, it? It seems a lot and, it's, of and he's brilliant. Yeah, he's a rad dude, Grim. I love him. Was there a skateboarder around at that time called Arbel? Do you remember yeah. Arbel? He was fucking Samson-on. really good. And I, it, it always pops up like, where is he? What's he doing? I think I yeah. found his LinkedIn. I think he just <clears> works <throat> in like a solid profession now. Good lad. But I he mean, he was, was very good. He had a really good backsmith on a ramp. And he had real good backside 50 to like disaster smack in disaster. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did some really cool stuff. He he used to come around like doing things and come up to the Southampton or wherever and yeah. go off again. And yeah, he was really good. Our bell was amazing. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'd love to see what. Just fizzled out for him, I think. I want to talk about the brilliant Andy Evans okay. and how good his videos are and how you got involved with those because is it this and that you're quite heavily in th- which yeah. one's the one where you, you've you got the New Deal 1281 white t-shirt on and you're doing pressure flips and you're like I know I can come back oh, uh, is that just in time yeah maybe yeah I love but, his I love his videos like the amount of work he puts into him yeah, is fucking wild I mean he films them for a long time yeah and What's amazing is he'll come up with this skit that only he f- feels is funny. Yeah. And he'll film it and put it out yeah. and bring it to the world. And it usually is really funny. And I guess from working with him on Rad, it sort of progressed to yeah. filming things. And we just, we would be at Livy and we'd be doing Rad to search for the Holy mm. Grail or Holy Rail. And we'd film stuff and he'd keep it to put in his videos. His. So. Yeah, and then I think, because what's funny, when he started working for Rad, he thought I was just going to be a complete prick. And maybe I was, I don't know. But he was, he, he was like, oh, my God, you're actually a, a skateboarding geeky idiot. Mm-hmm. And it was like we'd met perfectly the right time. And I didn't know at the time that he'd done Chilling, which mm. was a yeah, ideal video. Yeah, I've got which that. Which is amazing with, like, Biffa and, like, all of those people. So I've I watched that, that as well. religiously, no, no, no. and I was like, then when I found out, I was like, oh, my God, you're the dude that made that. Mm-hmm. And it was like this weird meeting. Like a crossover you know, it was, of the It was minds. great, yeah. Is, but it, is he from Birmingham then? What was the idea? He's thing? lived all round, all round. I think he lived down by Brighton for a bit, was mm. up in Birmingham, was, was it Warsaw maybe or whatever? Mm. I don't know. And then now he's down <clears> back in Brighton. <throat> um, but, yeah, he's lived all around. And, um, 
he just started making these videos and it yeah. sort of just fell into place. It wasn't like, can you do some things for this? It'd be like, let's film this silly thing. And it'd yeah. be like, okay, cool. And it, it would be, here's a weird jacket to wear or whatever, yeah. or yeah. here's a, a thing. And he'd just have the camera on and you'd be like, well, what are we doing? And then there'd just be these little things that we would do messing around and then he'd start capturing them on film and yeah. then they'd end up going into the videos. And I think what was good because at, the, at that time it within not so much British skateboarding, but within a lot of American skateboarding and skateboarding media around the world, media as in videos coming out and stuff. It was very kind of serious Just about to say, gangster, yeah. you know, the, the right tricks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we were just making this. Well, Funny I didn't even shit. know we were making this entertaining stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it was <clears throat> more in keeping with what you would see at a Radlands comp. Mm. Chris Ince with his top off on top of the driveway <laughs> wow. screaming and people messing around and little pockets of people that you were like, I wish I knew those dudes from Liverpool or yeah. I wish I knew the, the Birmingham dudes and mm. that. And then you gravitate towards people. And I think it was a video that sort of encaptured or the first video was encaptured all that kind of silliness of skateboarding yeah. and not keeping things too seriously serious. Yeah. Cause I think things were serious and they were at a stage as important as any other stage within skateboarding. It's not like it wasn't, hey, we shouldn't have been serious about skateboarding. Like people should be serious about skateboarding if they feel like they should be. <clears throat> but everyone's got a it cough. was the antithesis of what was going on at the time. And I remember hearing things like, oh, these people absolutely hate that video or these people think it's amazing. <clears throat> Somehow made its way out to the States. I heard that Musker had seen the Musker the Busker thing that I'd done and everything. I was like, <laughs> Musker the Busker. I never thought that. What did he think about would... it? I bet I'm he not sure. It. I think he liked it. Yeah, he, but... I'm sure he probably thought it was And then funny. I remember Renton Miller intervie in introducing me to one of his friends as this guy that's done these videos and he's hilarious and he's done this skit and all these things and just being like, this is weird. How do these people even know about this? this these videos? Yeah. But they somehow got around and they were really big so like they were they were really like quite mm. bigger than i thought they were and it all comes from the madness spiraling around inside andy evans's head it's amazing yeah i don't know if i'd like to go in there but i like to be around it and see some of it come out <laughs> i love that he likes the stuff that no one else likes and like it's on rad need, he went and interviewed. you need isn't it in skating you need people like that Doing, yeah, because skate, going stuff. skateboarding is going skateboarding, regardless if you don't like it or not, mm -hmm. or what aspect of it. If it's someone doing pogos here, someone doing some other freestyle stuff here, and someone on a launch ramp, someone on a curb, someone skating a American picnic bench, it's all skateboarding. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. You can't change that. But he would like the stuff that other people weren't necessarily into and would give it some limelight <laughs> and would say, hey, let's put this in the spotlight. Did you have a script for Musker the Busker? No. Do you just make it up as you went along? Yeah, we just sort of, you know, we'd have a rough idea of what we're doing. Can you doing. find that? I want to see that again. Oh, and God, I was about to ask if the freestyle <laughs> fella from Musker the Busker Brighton is still about as well. So I think he's a very, <clears throat> very well qualified doctor. Oh, really? Okay. So I think he's doing that. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he was amazing. Yeah. Oh, he was really good. Mm. Good freestyle I think parts. he got a message once from Rodney Mullins saying that Rodney hadn't done the trick that he'd done which would be weird wouldn't it mm. oh so he did a freestyle trick and Mullen was like I've never yeah I've That's not wild. either not seen it or not done it so yeah there's probably a network of freestylers in the world and they they all watching everything every anything to do with freestyle that comes out they yeah because it. it's because it's still so <clears> small <throat> it's a proper niche thing isn't it let's talk about this skateboard here your 40 board yeah it's uh seven plies it's a it's a skateboard <laughs> it's a shaped board yeah not it's a modern shaped board but it has a shape it's got a graphic on it yeah so how many truck holes has it got it's got eight standard. that's good you Pretty don't standard. need to use all eight you, no, can, that you is could good. use four and get away with it yeah, yeah. have you ever done that no i never did that <laughs> jed does that? that jed cullen I don't that understand that. Like, we're saving a bit of weight. 
I used to do three above and below. So it was like the right would match up with the lower left. So you'd, you'd have two at the front and one on the right. And at the bottom, you'd have two at the back and one on the left. Riveting stuff. <laughs> that was uh, just like a mental tell, thing. <laughs> tell us about your board. Well, oh, 40. Uh, the guys at 40, I was chatting to them for a long time mm. and sort of I'm in an R and about doing something. And then they were like, hey, let's let's do a board. I was like, okay, cool. Let's get French to design it. So French fucking love French yeah. in a matter of <clears throat> days, I think. Yeah, yeah. And just decided it would be all of the bad bits that I've got. And yeah, television's Mark Churchill in the top. So yeah. It's a good graphic. I mean, I blew my spleen up not too long ago doing a feeble. So he put that in there. And then, yeah, wrists are screwed and tied up by the mic. Yeah. Learned to skate on an old crap board like you did. The um, foot. Yeah. Foot's all bandaged up and dead. But yeah, you should Be buy good. it. It's great. It's still available now. It's still available, still available. now. Yeah, there's there's a shaped version as well. Yeah, there's a few available on their site I was looking earlier. Yeah. And if you're lucky, you might be able to ask Gabba Gabba Skates to do the other board, the, the Ziggy board. Nice. That's there. He did a custom shape yeah. for me. Nice. That's one of one. And then he knocked out a few more. And then the money he was going to pay me, half of it split and goes to Live Like Ralph and to Ben mm -hmm. Ramers Foundation. Yeah. So oh, right, you good. It, you give money to charity. Nice. And that's still available now. You could probably ask him to do one. I think he, that's a line <coughs> I print that he made. Oh, okay. Yeah. A photo of my dog. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's got it. And if you wanted a custom skateboard, nice. it'd be a great one to do. Yeah, cool. Um, just going back to 40, we've got the 40 Jam in July, I think. Do you know when? I can't remember. It'd be um, a date to know, wouldn't it? Well, Marty keeps saying he's going to call me, but he hasn't yet. But we've, Marty. We had a date. Hang on. Let me just get it. See if you can find the date. Cause I need to, well, I'm not going to be here anyway. Because we were like, let's just do a 40 event. We haven't decided. 27th of July. 27th of July, 40 event of Roller Snakes. That's a shame. I'm going to check. Well, I it's not a shame. Are. It's good that it's happening. It's a well, shame that I can't be there. I don't know exactly. It'll be it'll be fun, whatever we decide to do. Maybe but... do it in August. No, we're doing it. We can't do fucking August, you pleb. You're what? not here, are you? You are. I'm doing a pretty big gig. It's the well, bigger than the for forty BBC. jam. Bigger so, than the forty jam at roller yeah. stakes. Why yeah. can't we do it in August? Because we've got a bank holiday jam. Let go of my neck. Yeah, but you. you <laughs> That's quite four, forceful. <laughs> why can't we do it? In, <laughs> these four. Let go of my four neck. Four weeks in August. Bank holiday jam's only <sighs> July twenty seventh. So you're not here. We'll do it mid August. Do we do the same? BBC. I'm gonna be in Paris doing the, mm. the Olympics. Yeah, so uh, don't bother with that. You might have heard of it. This instead. A, a limb. What's it called? The Olympics. Olympics. You might have heard of it. Skateboarding. In the Olympics. Maybe, I don't know. Who would have thought about it? Wait, hold on a minute. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of The Brain Drain Show, the podcast that you're enjoying listening to right now. Consume. Today's sponsor is Consume Clothing. Toby, take it away. You must consume. Consume Clothing is from the mind of deaf skateboard's boss man, Nick Zorlak. Consume. Nick has been involved in the skateboarding industry for decades and mm -hmm. Consume Clothing is his new project. Consume. Nick's going to be working with some of his favourite photographers and artists, the first two being the very own Toby Bachelor. Consume. And the second one being Chris Bork. You must consume immediately, if not sooner. Consume Clothing is made from a high-quality organic cotton which has been ethically and responsibly sourced. Consume. In the first drop, you can expect hoodies, crewnecks, long sleeves, T-shirts, stickers, and there's lots more to come. Consume. And make sure you head over to Consume.Official on Instagram for more information. Links are in the description. Now, Toby. You must consume. We're going back to the show. We should talk about death. Skateboards or the act of death? I was just gonna Dying say, you from want to skateboarding. About... Okay. Because there's quite a good Take it away. story around. So I was filming a section and... A part. A part. I call it a video section. Section is that an old school thing? video part? Video yeah, maybe. Part. Yeah, video section is um, kind of for welcome to Skate Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So started skating for Skate Pharmacy when that opened with Nick from Margate. Big I, forced, I forced myself on the Skate Pharmacy team many years ago. Nick will, uh, Nick will back me up on that. 
he said no to skating for him. So I filmed a part and then sliced it in with videos of Jesus Christ being crucified. And then he just replied to me. He just messaged me and just put, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> You're officially unwelcome to the team. And then I think he sent me some t-shirts. Amazing. That's well good. Is that video available online? Might be on my Facebook. See if I can find it. He might have it on a hard drive somewhere and just be like, what the fuck is this? Get that pinned on Instagram. I'm and everyone can go and find it. it. So you were filming a part. Welcome Film to apart Skate. For that. Coming towards the end of, of filming that. And I um went to prevail skate house in Paul yeah. to film a few bits with um one of the local guys. Um got there. Dropped in on the bowl. I'd said hello to a few people. Dropped in on the bowl. And I went to do a, the original grapefruit grind, which was a feeble yeah. in forwards. That's called a different thing now. I for some reason. I didn't realise. Did, do you have to go in forwards to, to, to call it a grapefruit grind? I believe so. Right, I didn't know that. I've been led That's, to believe. Right, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a feeble grind was originally called a grapefruit grind, whether you mm. did it going Don't backwards know. or forwards. But yeah. anyway, did right. a grapefruit grind. Yep. And then I just found myself kneeling down on the bottom of the bowl, completely still, yeah. like unable to move. And I was like, this is a bit weird. And then Irish Tony was like, get out, we're trying to skate, what are you doing? It wasn't a bad slam. Yeah. And I was there just sort of like, this is weird. And then he came down into the bowl and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I can't really move. Is it, what are you on about? It helps me up takes me to the end of the bowl and I get out the shallow end and I'm laying on the platform and like a little crowd starts gathering around and like, I'm like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, so I'm going to do this trick and thinking about what I was going to do for the video section is like coming to the end of it. I wanted to do a few things there. And um, I'm laying there and this guy came over and he's like, do you want an ambulance? I'm like, no, no. And then Jed Cullen was over to the side and he looked over at me and he was like, Get, in, get him an ambulance. And I was like, really? I'm just, I feel all right. Like, what's going on? I just can't really move that well. So I'm laying there and then they put me on the phone to this guy and I'm like, hello? So it's like, I'm in the emergency vehicle coming to you, a fast response vehicle coming to you now. You know, name your symptoms. And I'm like, I feel all right. I don't know. I just like a bit winded and can't breathe that well and just can't really move that well. And he's like, can you put your hand on your chest? Like, yeah, all right. So I put my hand on my chest. And he's like, does it feel like a wet fish? I was like, yeah. What the hell? He's like, I'm going to be with you in three minutes. How, hand like the phone a, back. Like a wet fish? How, yeah. So sweaty and cold. Uh, yeah. So you're sweating, but you're cold. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is weird. So then they take me out the back of the skate park and sit me on a stool. <clears throat> he comes over and he's like, right, puts a cannula in my hand. Everything he's going, you're going straight to hospital. I'm like, I feel all and right. And you still don't know what's going on at this point. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I feel all right, like whatever. So then Jed's like, I'll come with you. So we go off to Paul Hospital. I go in there and I like see someone. They do a, a scan of me and they're scanning my chest um, with just with the ultrasound. And they're like, oh, you look all right. I will keep an eye on you. And I'm in the ward and I'm, I'm laying there. And then Jed's like over the top of me going, you're all right. You're all right. And I'm, Yeah. What are you doing? He's like, you passed out. No, I didn't. He's like, you fully passed out while you were talking to me. All right, cool. And then he's like, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm like, yes. He was just asking me that. And he's like, you passed out again. Then I come around and he's shouting at the nurses because I was there was no room, so I was on the ward. Mm. Yeah. On the corner of the ward, just in a bed. And he's shouting at him, he's dying. Get here now. Like, what is going on? You've got to look after him. So the next thing I know is I'm up on the ward in a separate room and they said to me, can you um, do a urine sample for us? So they gave me a little pot to put the urine in. Mm. So I walk into the bathroom. Next thing I'm just on the floor, soaking wet. I'm like, what is going on here? Piss yourself. Yeah, I was I'm just going to say again. that. Like well, we started off the show <laughs> talking about shit ourselves. Um, so I crawl back to the bed. I get the alarm, press the button. The woman comes in. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, you want a mid-flow sample of urine. That's how you... They were like, we don't do that anymore. You just wee in it and you should have done it in your bed. I'm like, well, I'm trying to keep it clean. Like, no one told me that. 
oh yeah, and by the way, I've gone blind. And she's like, what? And I was, I couldn't see a thing. <laughs> oh, and by the way. Like, what, you should have started that conversation with you've gone blind. <laughs> and I was like, well, anyway, I can't see. And then it started coming back a little bit. Was it full darkness? Or was yeah, it like so heavy blur? I, I remember being stood at the toilet and starting to go and things just phew, to a pinprick. And then I was on the floor. Pissing yourself. Pissing myself still, right. obviously. Not laughing. Um, <laughs> they get a specialist to come and look at me. And they're like, you're going straight to Bournemouth Hospital now to have an operation. And I'm like, I still feel still fine. Still don't know what's going I'm on. Like, I'm, I feel like I could get up and do a dance or whatever if I could see mm. a bit better or whatever. But you have pitched yourself and you can't see anything. Uh, there's obvious <clears> symptoms <throat> that some it's not right. And you feel like a wet fish. Yeah. Well, the wet fish thing had kind of gone away at that time, although I wasn't really feeling up my chest at the time. So this surgeon specialist guy comes in and says, you've got to go to hospital, head off to hospital. So... I get put straight in an ambulance, like not like in an hour of time mm -hmm. or whatever. They take me from him talking to me put on you that in bed and drive you and put me straight into the back of an ambulance mm -hmm. and take me to the Bournemouth hospital. So going mm -hmm. to there, I come through this woman's like, you got to sign here. And I'm like, what for? She's like, this is for the surgery. And I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, you've blown your spleen up and you, you're bleeding to death. And I was like, Insane. Right, okay. Well, so, now I know. <clears throat> cool. So I feel all right. Can we just leave it and see how it goes? Because I feel like I don't really need to have surgery. Mm. And she was like, if you don't have this operation, you're going to die. Like, which is a weird thing for someone to say to you. Yeah. Like, oh, right, okay. So what? what is the surgery? And she was like, we're going to try one thing. If that doesn't work, we're going to cut from your belly button all the way up open up your rib, rib cage and go in. And I'm like, shit, this is like gnarly. Yeah. So we take, they take me from the back of the, this is just at the back of the, out the back of the ambulance into a waiting surgery room thing where you would get your an, an anaesthetist would come in and do stuff. I'm like, so you're going to put me under? They're like, no, we're going to do this bit while you're awake. And if we have to do the other bit, we'll put you to sleep. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> So they wheel me into the main surgery thing and they've got like clouds on the ceiling and everything. They're like, we're going to put Spotify on. Do you want to listen to anything? I'm like... Brain drain uh, show, please. I don't know. It's a bit before your time. <laughs> <coughs> that would have been well good though. But yeah. I, for some reason I chose Turing Breaks. And now when I listen to them, I think about that. But so they put a little barrier up. So you can't see it like a so little So you can't sheet. see anything. And they go into my vein... The main vein in the side of your right leg. They go all the way up the vein. All fully numb, yeah? Just that area is numb. Mm. The rest of it isn't. So can so you feel it? They're like, yeah. can you feel that? And I was like, I can feel like there's a bit of pulling. And they're like, all right, good. They're like, can you feel that? And I'm like, no, no. And then that's it. And they had a bank of screens up. And I'm laying there and I'm like, I was skating not that long ago. Like, I think this is, yeah, maybe 12 hours have gone past or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was skating not that long ago and, and now I'm sat here with this going on. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> so then what they're doing is putting a, a thing up through my vein and then going across my splenic artery and then putting stents, these platinum coils, all the way across my chest. And every time they put one in, they get the mobile donut thing to come and scan me and inject me with loads of iodine to see where well, everything yeah. is. But meanwhile, everything's on camera on these screens and everything. Yeah. And I'm laying there like, what is going on? Like, this is mental. I don't even feel that bad. Like by, th by this time, actually, I felt a couple of ribs. I think I've broken a couple of ribs. Um, and just this whole thing. And then they sew me up and they're like, looks like that's working. Like, We'll, we'll put you on the ward. But I was in the ward for doing my spleen in skating longer than I was on the ward for my car crash. Mm. So I'm like there for weeks and weeks and weeks, lost loads of weight, getting more and more ill, like on loads of tablets every day because your spleen yeah. cleans all your blood and takes all the impurities out and everything. Yeah. So that's not happening anymore. And I was like, what has happened? This is weird. Like 
not even a bad slam, completely ruined myself and then sat on this ward for weeks on end, like feeling fine, like was ready you, to go home. Was you doing the feeble and remember the slam? Or did you kind of come no, I to... It. Yeah, I remember it. Oh, I didn't do you, What did you do? Just like run out and... What, so what happened on the slam? I did the, the feeble slam? and I think I came in and my board didn't. And then I thought I was riding away, but so my board wasn't there. So I just did full went body slam. like that, didn't put my yeah. hands down or anything. So I just bounced impact. off the floor up onto my knees and that was it. So, Madness, and it had just it? blown my spleen <clears throat> completely to pieces. So what happened? You're on, you're on the, the wards, you're feeling For okay. Weeks. Yeah. And I'm just like, I want to go home. People are coming and seeing me and all this stuff. And I'm like, do you reckon I can go home? Like, I feel fine. And they're like, no, you've got to stay. We've got to get the okay from the surgeon and all this stuff. And I'm like, are they just waiting for me to get bad again and be leaking blood and start mm. having the symptoms again yeah. or what? Or like, so I'm like, am I all right or am I not all right? So I'm sat in this like state of... Purgatory. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, am I going to die in a minute or am I not? Or am I just going to indefinitely be in hospital or what? Yeah. <clears throat> From a fucking feeble grind. But it was, it turned out good because well, it didn't turn out good. I, I went home for a while and then I had my follow-up like outpatients appointment when I was back in Southampton. So I go to that and I, this time I'm taking loads of penicillin and other tablets every day to keep myself healthy. Yeah. Their request, like you've got to take all of this stuff. So I had my little Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday yeah, box yeah. thing with all my tablets <laughs> in. I'd like aged 60 years at that point to being like old. Mm. And I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. So I go to the appointment. They said, right, somehow you haven't got a spleen, but somehow your blood's getting cleaned. Your blood's come back fine. Stop taking the tablets and everything. I'm like, amazing, amazing. And I, then I was like, well, what's going on? They're like, I think blood is coming from your pancreas and your stomach. And somehow your body's worked out a way to clean the blood through what's left of your spleen or whatever's there, but we mm -hmm. can't even find it. So... Fucking hell. Whatever. And I'm like, brilliant. And there was two student nurses that were there because um, Southampton's a student hospital, a university hospital. And the girl said, right, you know, we've looked through all of this, like doing all our stuff and look at all these injuries from you skateboarding. You're going to give up skateboarding now. And this, just straight off the top of my head, I was like, why? I haven't got a spleen now, so I can't do that again. So I'm even more invincible than I was before I did it. And they just looked at me. And it's, I, I said it, but I didn't even think about it. It was yeah. just, a, a, it was like, what are you talking about? Like, I can't do that again. So I'm even more invincible. Like, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can carry on skateboarding. I, it's fine. And it's something that sort of stayed with me because it, that's the skateboarding kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You'll overcome it. Like, mm. you'll work a way around it and put a spin on it that it's all, all good. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. like kind of a... yeah. For me, it echoes like skateboarders' mentality of yeah. you're down, but you're not out. Just get on with it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, okay, cool. I'll work around it. Like, you know, okay. I've what got was their foot, reaction okay, when you said that? It's just like, what? Because like, they can't, proper, like skateboarders that don't understand. No, they don't get it at all. It's like, it's completely alien to them. And they it, they so. just were like, but you keep hurting yourself skateboarding. Like, and I'm like, yeah, but that's it's how do you explain <laughs> something that has tormented you and made you a decrepit you. mess? Yeah. How do you explain how amazing that is? Because they can't see it. They just see that bit of it. Yeah. They don't see you in moments of joy from landing yeah. a trick that you've been trying for yeah. 12 years or dreamt yeah. of doing. If you had all those injuries on a piece of paper and you didn't do any sport, <clears throat> they'd think you were self-inflicting oh, yeah. injuries. And they'd you'd think be... think you were a stuntman or like mm. some sort of... You'd be locked up. In experimental, a... yeah, like... Artist. Yeah. I'm a pain artist. <laughs> so does, does like it, something like someone locked you in a cage and just beat you to work out what things work. That's the sort of thing you'd like. Yeah, um, probably. Does it give you any grief now? Like not having a spleen? No. no. You've got, still got some of it, haven't you? I don't know. They can't find it. There must be something in there and it must be the one bit that does the filtering of the blood, but my bloods are fine, so and I'm healthy. So. Do you have to have checkups for that? No. Fucking no, hell. They completely discharge so me. Right. Like your bloods the, are normal, so... That's um, leave it at that. That's a really, really lucky. That's a really yeah. rad story to end on. Um, yeah. I did have another question, but we'll, we should probably leave it on that one, eh? Have you ever seen a ghost? 
Have I ever seen a ghost? Yeah, properly. So I've just moved to a cottage nice. that was built in 1650. Good year. So it's a fantastic year. It's built out of an old boat. Um, Did you get a survey done on that? That sounds a bit sketchy, isn't it? It's rented. Okay. So moved there and I keep seeing a little dog. Now yeah. I own a little dog, little right. Ziggy. He's a Chihuahua Jack Russell Cross. So he's tiny. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I keep saying, what are you doing, Zig? And there's no dog there, but I keep seeing a dog come in. That's about as close to a ghost. Well, is, do you see him during the day? Yeah, day, night, okay, whatever. Okay, that's like. good. There seems like they're, they're listening. Toby's been getting I'll really just, pissed off I'll that just, ghosts only come out at night. I just think, what's the point? If you're going to be a ghost, get get out Do it all the time. Yeah. I'd be like in that bush. Yeah, I'd be fucking... Yeah. Yeah. If I was a ghost, yeah. I would be at it non-stop fucking with people. Imagine how much fun you could have. I just would like, love it. Just move that a little bit. People yeah. go... But when I'd be like, well, you, I was going to say, you can piss in someone's drink and that. It's not going to be pissing. <laughs> anyway, let's, should we wrap that let's up? wrap it up on that. Thanks one. for coming, so, dude. Good to see you. Me. Since you are the most media TV man here, you can sign us off. Say, I'm Mark Churchill. You've been watching okay. The Brain Drain Show. I'm Mark Churchill, and you've been watching The Brain Drain Show. First try. Look at that first try. Right, Thanks, let's go dude. find you a new Cheers. spleen. <laughs>